Once again, welcome. Good afternoon. Adam Fitzgerald, host of the Dark and Dower. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Nelson Martins, uh, aka DJ Thermal Detonator, host of Truth or TV, 9 11 Skeptics versus Truth, and other things. I am Ed Brotherton, aka Ed Brotherton, and uh, <laughs> formerly, formerly, um, the uh, head up of We Are Change LA, and uh, yeah. And now so we're I'm... just here, basically, going to go over the Jason Burmas video that he made. I did a response, but it was short, and I wanted to keep it short and sweet, where I gave my own personal thoughts on part of the video. But I, I did want to say uh, that I wanted to do a little bit more, because there was other things that he did say that I didn't get to, that Nelson reminded me of, and we both agreed that we should do it a proper uh, um, response video where we're going to share some thoughts, not so much as a criticism of Jason Burmes, even though he doesn't talk to me, won't talk to Nelson. I'm hoping with this video, basically he'll, you know, he'll see that we're not the enemy. We're just basically want to basically talk with them about certain things that he's so close on, but yet he's further away on some of the things that um that we are going to basically disagree with uh and for no reason at all uh other than i think from his own um i think his own thoughts regarding hijackers and hijacked planes he doesn't negate that the planes were hijacked but he believes that there was a swap somewhere through and i don't know why he's believing this because there's no evidence to support this i mean you know we saw the planes hmm. crash into the targets on 9 11 and they plane debris and DNA was found to site, which means that if, you know, if there was a swap, you know, all that plane debris is actually replaced and had to be put under tons of debris in broad daylight. And yeah. nobody well, saw why, why he would believe such things is look at his, you know, most famous film, Loose Change. You know, what does it open up with? Operation Northwoods. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a problem. But like I said, um, I do want to make a proper uh, response video regarding his latest video, which is, by the way, I, I, he didn't watch the TMZ special just to get people to understand that much. Not yet. I think he's going to make a video about that. And um, this is basically his thoughts about what uh, was found on uh, Flight 23. And I say, let's get on with it. Right? So we could just fast forward. And it's like, yeah. oh, man, I, I hate playing anything from TMZ because I'm scared they're going to go at, they always go after the, that's why we're not going to play um, the actual scared. TMZ clip from this right here. Uh, I guess it's like an hour long documentary. I've not watched it yet. I will. It may be uh, available on Hulu or something like that. I, I saw when I, when I looked it up, it looked like it was Hulu. Okay. None of this is new. I just, I need to point that out. <laughs> And, and, and didn't watch it, but he new, knows it's not new. Not go ahead. And not unknown. It was already in the public arena. So when I hear this, yes. I get I get a little upset. I love the way it was done, first of all, because it's not long. You don't have to watch. Everything these days is too long. Right. Like, you, you can say it in an hour, and you do. <laughs> we did. Right. And Not the really. premise, I don't know how anybody didn't, wasn't all over this for the last 20 years, but. Hi. Hi, Bill. Remember when you were throwing people out of your show real time when they would talk about <laughs> Building 7? And you would say, yeah, you are a nutcase. Yeah, you are a kook. I wonder who that was. Okay. And look, in the past, yeah, I don't know who they threw out. I have referred, especially in my younger days, referred to 9/11 being a quote unquote inside job. Now, by 2008, and that's a long time ago, I had made this film a follow-up to Loose Change, trying to, uh, I would say, answer some of my critics. And say, you know what? Let's not do the physical anomalies. Let, let's go with all the other stuff that points to a criminal operation. Let's try to make it as concise as possible. And let's see the debunkers come after this one. No one came after it. No one even really tried. They just tried to ignore it. And I guess it worked. Because here's Bill Maher 
how somebody wasn't all over this the last 20 years. Uh, hi. <laughs> right here. <laughs> we released yep. the film. We're going to watch the warnings and war games uh, section to, to really drive home that what they're about to talk about is not unique. So, so what are they talking about? But crazy. That, what is it called? 9 11, the fifth plane? The fifth oh, plane. I mean, that says it all. There was a fifth plane. There's no doubt in my mind after watching this that that absolutely was the fifth plane. There's no law that says, ben, no, we could only have four planes. No, there was probably, there could have been six. There could have been six. But there definitely was this one. So let's stop. Yeah. And it was reported on, but they were whispers. And it was also reported that weapons had been planted on other planes. So so then a lot of people... Well, you need to stop. Again. Yeah, yeah, I'll stop right there. Yeah, because it's already, it's already drifting off from the whole Bill Maher thing, and he said a lot of things, you know, um, that uh, really doesn't make sense. He has, he's just not in a position to be speaking about because, you know, oh, for 20 years, no. You know, yeah, Fabled Enemies came out in 2009, OK, but, you know, you your film only covers the subject for two minutes. I have fabled enemies. I've sampled the section on flight 23. <clears throat> and he just basically utilizes another documentary that had briefly covered flight 23, which was a History Channel documentary called Grounded on 9-11. Mm. And with that, he only included a news archive from NBC News from the, the morning of September 13th, around 10 o'clock in the morning, doesn't even mention the, new, the the time of this news report, where it's briefly explaining this incident, some incident going on at JFK, and it's a very edited piece. And that's that's all he did. He, he, he didn't cover, you know, the subject. And, you know, I'm also very skeptical of, you know, how much archives that he had uh, for him to just pick this particular NBC part, which he will show towards the end of this presentation. But I don't want to get so much into that. I think um, what really needs to be addressed here is how he is uh, handling that it's Bill Maher, what's being skeptical. And then the most important thing, you know, he says six plane, you know, yeah. why isn't Jason even addressing that? I mean, if, Bert, you know, if, if, if Bill Maher is really willing to go that far out there, but I think you guys need to speak a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, listen, um, uh, you bring up an interesting uh, point regarding the the additional. This goes into your uh, hypothesis, which is actually backed by the evidence on September 13th about the additional second wave of attacks. And that's not you saying or me saying it. That's actually the evidence. In fact, the co-chair of the Joint House Inquiry, Bob Graham, actually even states that they knew about this second wave of attacks. <laughs> Uh, Zacharias Musawi, just to use an example, Zacharias Musawi, who was the alleged 20th hijacker, he wasn't hot, he wasn't tortured, by the way. He was actually the only convicted uh, terrorist involved with the 9-11 attacks that was tried in a federal court in uh, Virginia. And he states under his own volition that he was involved with the initial attacks, but that he was regulated to the second wave of attacks. Why would he lie about that, right? Because there was supposed to be the second wave. Now, I'll admit, years ago, people like you, when you talked about these additional hijackings, I, I wish this would have been the forefront of your film in Loose Chain, but I know it wasn't your film that was Dylan Avery. This is the reason why you made Fabled Enemies, right? You went off on your own and made your own film. But I, it it doesn't help the fact that you could, you, you could admit that, that much, but you then delve into the swap theory, which... I don't know why you need to do that because like I said in the other video I made, I'll, I'll just quickly reiterate here. You're involving a lot more people in the public sector, not so much the private sector, but when you involve people in the FAA or the National Transportation Safety Board or with law enforcement at Pennsylvania, in Washington, D.C., in New York, you're involving thousands of people. In the Pentagon alone, it was approximated it was 5,000 people. <laughs> New York, it was well over 13,000. Can you imagine that each and every one of the, now let's just say one third of them were involved in the collection of plane debris, 
Okay. You have to follow those people for the rest of their lives, listening to their phone calls every second of the day to just to make sure that these people line up with the story that you're telling and that this went on for 22 years. It's not plausible. Hmm. Why not allow the hijacked planes basically just crash where they are uninterfered with. And this way you kill everybody on board. They can't say nothing. You basically, um, don't have to put plain debris in broad daylight for everybody. You don't have to involve all these agencies that have to go along with the collection of evidence, the collection of DNA and all this stuff. And now you don't involve a lot of people, only those in the higher up, maybe, right? It's a select few. And this is how you could keep a conspiracy going or whatever, right? But when you involve the public sector, too much at play here. And I think that's the problem with 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 you is that you you give this swap theory, but yet you just have no evidence for it. Yet you can admit that there's hijackings. That's what drives. I think that's what drives me to like, you know, respond to you more than I would like say, you know, Rebecca Roth or you know, Christopher Bowen or something. They're lost, in my opinion. I don't think you're lost. I, I think you can be somebody who's much more an authority on 9/11 than say what the public the right public sees you as as somebody who's inconsistent yeah somebody who's associated to alex jones you yeah know. And that that's another argument i don't want to really concentrate on i hate out personally i think yeah I, I know but, but let's but we know we know that we, with the sandy hook stuff yeah. everything okay that's that's clear that's who he's going to be always associated with and that's where that's going to be his legacy so you know <clears throat> If he wants to uh, succeed or go somewhere, you're going to have to distance yourself, you know, even more so than what Paul Paul Joseph Watson did. <laughs> oh, know? yeah. Look, I, let me just final finalize that thought and just piggyback on that, is that you, you can and you will get people, more people for your Patreon account if you follow Alex Jones. He has a tremendously successful platform. And for those who tell the truth, they don't have such a massively successful platform. Now, I would submit to you that if you go down this route, you sure will, in time, get your, uh, I guess, your benefit from him. But you're not going to be taken seriously, not by the right people. And in order to do that, you need to tell the unfiltered truth. And that means that you may want, to, you may have to sacrifice those people that follow you. If you come right out and say, hey, listen, I was wrong about the swap theory, be prepared for probably about, and this is my opinion, two thirds of your followers to basically call you a shill and forever call you a government plant and you to take a massive hit regarding finances of whatever you get from your Patreon sure. account and followers. Sure. But, and but, it, but, but you will be respected by the right people. Well, he his 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 following has not as been as huge as it as it people think it would be. There are other researchers that have bigger following to his. So even if he was to lose two thirds, you'd be getting rid of a lot of clutter, and you would be building a you know a, a, a newer audience, basically. Sure, but you but know. without but without the success in in gaining uh, finances from it. Yeah, not ex yeah, yeah. Right. Which he's not even getting at this moment right now, anyways. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't well, know. I, I mean, he's, he's not. Well, I mean, his channel's not really huge. I mean, not in not in subscribers wise. I mean, I mean, people even like. I mean, even Adam Green <laughs> has got more followers and more people paying attention to him live than this guy. You know, and well, Green uh, is not even you know focusing on nine eleven. He doesn't even. He's rather. He's still relatively new. You know. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, I don't like. Uh, there, could there be multiple factors at play? Like, is there an algorithm problem here? Like, he's there, not... there is. He's complained about it. So, so is so is uh, you know Luke Radowski. They've complained about that they're not getting the same, you know, at, you know, activity, you know, responses. Is that, why, is that why Luke is on the Tim Pool show to get some relevancy? Back? Of course, of course. We don't want to get into all the all these like specific yeah, that's you right, know, with, with drama and all that stuff. But I mean. You know the boy, wait, wait, wait. But the most important thing here is this: he's opened up. He's opened up this whole thing. Okay, he hasn't watched the special. He's only read an article, and he sees a clip of Bill Maher. Okay, 
And he's upset about that. He is brought up. He has uh, issues with Bill Maher for a long time. Mm. And what were those issues for? Throwing out truthers. What truthers? His show is not in New York. His show is in Los Angeles. Ed? <laughs> yep. So, change Los Angeles so who, folks, who is uh, Jason yeah. talking about being thro- Bill Maher throwing out truthers, Ed? That was a, the catalyst that started the We Are Change group, um, where uh, some groups from the 911truth.org uh, or 911truth uh, LA uh, folks uh, split off and went uh, and basically started their own group. It didn't have a name at the time. They just kind of separated because they wanted to be more more uh, activist rather than just sit around talking about things. So they went off and uh, they Bill Maher made a comment on one of the shows about um, about the 9/11 Truth community in general, right. and um, and in response to that, they decided to do a response video about it, and um, and then they found out that they were. You know, they decided to go to a filming, a live taping of one of his shows since it was live, and then they would be able to confront him uh, live on the air. Yeah. And as a result, that became a very uh, that became a viral incident that made major news. And then um, those folks got kicked out of the Bomar show, and then that became the uh, catalyst, which uh, a lot of people started reaching out trying to find out who they were because they actually liked what they did and were in supportive of it and they realized that they had just created a monster and they needed to take responsibility for it so they formed uh a, a los angeles chapter of we are changed la yes and and, 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 and it's not just that they had the youtube channel already starting already then you know katie uh who else was it you know they did little news sketch little you know comic pieces making fun right. of bill maher because of the way he was you know denying building seven or no interest in it you know, he threw those people out. And this wasn't, remember, this wasn't two times. I mean, this wasn't once this has happened. This happened a second time. I, be, I believe the second time it may have just been Jeremy Roth Cushell and he got kicked out and they like threw him out, right? He was out the first time. He was there the first incident. Ans- okay. Then they did. I don't two- remember. I don't remember a second incident. There was a second incident. There, there was, was a second, second incident, incident involving, yeah. uh, there was a second incident involving the, um, um, uh, uh, name, um, uh, the uh, the attorney, um, the name, the attorney in Beverly Hill in uh, Beverly Hills, they went to the event, a uh, book signing event, and a bunch Richard of them got Benvenuti. kicked out there. No, no, it was um, Bill. Uh, was it? Was it Richard it was, Benvenista? Uh, the, the, no, the, no, no, it was under Clinton. Oh, okay. No, I mean, um, I mean, he get he got kicked out a few times. I I recall yeah. the second incident, and he didn't even get as far as to say something in the audience, you know, but, you know, point being is, is that, yeah, uh, you know, Burmese's issue here is because of, because of that, uh, because of Bill Maher, you know, uh, rejection, you know, the truth, and, 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 and I'm sure there's also the kind of thing is like, yeah, he's a likable guy. He's a funny guy. There's a lot of things we agree with. And, you know, and I think it's also important to remember that Bill Maher was one of the first people that was targeted after 9-11, basically, just for some of the things that he was saying, you know, uh, about our foreign policy that provoked 9-11 in the first place. Mm-hmm. So this man right. is spot on. I got, I, I mean, look, he's not that big of a, not really a big of a dick. I mean, you know, you've seen, the, a lot of people have seen the, the documentary Religious, you know, you see how he, he, you know, handles all those people. But look how he, look how he interviewed um, uh, uh, David Icke. And it wasn't in there. It was an outtake in the in the bonuses of the DVD. But even the way he was able to handle that interview with David Icke, you know, despite the problems that there is with David Icke, you know, <laughs> you know, he was he was still he's still somewhat respectable, and he let a let him explain, you know, his world theory and what's going to happen in the future, you know. So all of that happened, you know. So to be upset about because he rejected Building Seven, so what? Who died in Building Seven? Right. Nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're gonna get you're gonna have this beef over with him over that? Come on. And like I don't, you know, I don't believe Building Seven was demolition. I think the Twin Towers were. And if that was well, part I think, of the I think, to focus on the Twin Towers, sure. Right. But I think but, just, huh? but I think at that at that time, no, I think the the it was such a it was such an obvious uh it was it was to many of us, an obvious understanding that 
seeing Building Seven collapse the way it did was the real was the real question mark as to what really happened that day. Yeah, so I think that's why it, that's why it had so much attention at that time. Yeah, regardless it was a conversation of who died in it. Piece. Right, you know, exactly, and it, you know, it was an important one at the time because it did raise some questions. But to, but then once you raise those questions and you get answers to some to a certain degree, then then you need to move on. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, yes. And, and and but the but the thing here is this. You know, it's like yeah. You know, we they went on that show and Bill Maher already made issues. And I wish I wish Adam would be able to have this link to show. Uh, and, and I and I've shown it in my film Six on Seventy Seven, but you know, um, you know, the reason why Bill Maher. Well, first of all, before I even say that, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna let here, here you know people know, and and maybe Jason Burmans will get to hear this himself. But we had Tyrell Ventura show up to one of our We Are Change LA meetings, uh, and uh, I heard I overheard him speaking to a group of us, and I think even Bruno, the former leader of We Are Change, was in the circle. But he was saying that when his father, Jesse Ventura, was on the Bill Maher show, that afterwards, Bill ran up to him because they were talking about conspiracies in 9-11 too. Bill Maher went up to him and said, what's up with that Building 7? So he was actually, you know, behind the scenes, he's actually skeptical. But like I said, mm -hmm. Building 7 don't, don't mean crap. But what does mean something is the fact that look at the history of Bill Maher as his show, Politically Correct, how long it's been... Politically incorrect, politically incorrect, how long it's been going yeah. on. Well, did you ever think that maybe Bill Maher knew somebody who died on 9-11? Well, he certainly did. He had, back in 1999 and probably other times before, he had Barbara Olson as one of his guests on the show. You know, Barbara, who died on Flight 77, her husband, Ted, solicitor Ted Olson, the phone calls made, all of that. And what what you know what are you known for, Jason? Loose change, the film that propagates that Barbara Olson didn't die at the Pentagon. So knowing Bill Maher, knowing that these popularized conspiracies out there and the, you know, that they're you know basically advocating hoaxes like that, what do you expect Bill Maher to say? And then be optimistic about uh, this whole situation with uh like 23. So Jason, um, you got to also look into that. You also uh, need to remember there's a whole world, <clears throat> whole, you know, line of history that's existed before you were ever born. By the and, way, not, you know, they're talking, they're talking about flight 23, but you also got to remember, there was also questions regarding flight 133. There was questions about uh, what flight 299 1523, flight mm -hmm. 1060, flight 956. All these had, there was some communication about possible bombs on board, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, it's, yeah. So flight 23, yeah. But you got to remember, it, this was a, what are we going to do? Swap all those? Hmm. If they were actually real, real, real targets and real, yeah. um, what were they real, what were real, they doing? Real hijacking attack? a missile? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's, it's, yeah, they, there's there's a lot more planes and, and that's potentially involved in just flight twenty three as well, oh, and the right. ones that were actually we know about. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can swap those out too. That's like, yeah, and no. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a whole. There's a. Whole, you're involving way more people than what there there should be. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to just basically say for the NORAD at the highest levels to say run some exercises, run some drills and be out of the airspace in a certain sector. And because, um, you know, they have, let, well, I'm using speculation here, that they know these attacks are coming at a specific time, right? Um, and so for these planes not to interfere with the hijackings, well, that seems much more plausible than to say, basically say that all these planes somehow in midair are swapped. And then somehow that the, Plane debris on at all three crash sites are are planted in broad daylight in front of thousands of people, and for everyone that I mentioned previously to be involved in at some level, uh, you know, you stretch conspiracy into rationality, and that's where my cause for concern for you is. Um, yeah. I don't consider you like a detractor or a shill or anything like that. 
uh, I, I'm, I'm doing this in the hopes of reaching out to you and have a conversation. And you don't see us as detractors because you obviously do. You call me a troll. You block Nelson on, on Twitter and you won't respond to us. And we've been trying to reach out to you for a while. Yeah, yeah, we made some critical videos over the time, especially me. But basically, I'm, I, I care about what's being out there, the truth, because I want to do something more. I'm not comfortable just doing videos. You know, mm. I, I do want to go to court and stuff. But if you if we don't have like a movement of people, no one's going to listen to me. I'm a nobody. You know, yeah. no one's going to you know care. But if we could get the right people involved with this movement, talk about the right stuff. Hey, guess what? Now you build a movement. Maybe we can mm. basically get somewhere in court. And who knows? How yeah. about a new commission of sorts that, you know, people love to say that we'd love to get a new uh, investigation. Well, how are you going to do that? If you have a whole bunch of people that don't take you seriously. Yeah. I mean, look, basically what we're revealing here is like, this is why the mainstream doesn't respect you. <laughs> Jason, yeah, you I, I, I don't know what else to say other than that. Oh, keep Maniacs going. or there are people that try, you, you know, the people that try to make their names off the backs of others by trying to destroy them instead of having an actual conversation. Right. Well, you know, the, just let me add to that a little bit. We've been, Begging you, almost, literally telling you, hey, listen, we'd love to talk with you. Why don't you have a conversation? I'll, I'll go on wherever. I don't care. I'm not, look, I'm not the one doing this for money. I'm not doing this for show. I'm not doing this for a book or agenda or anything like that. I publish information daily. Nelson makes films, for God's sakes. We're trying to basically spread the actual conspiracies that are actually maligned by fringe conspiracy there isn't ignored by the press and government like I, i've always said there's a fight on two fronts here one's a fight against disinformation which is a time waster and one's a fight for information that we need to get from the federal government declassified files and reports and it doesn't help when we have to basically try and correct the mistakes made of the last 20 years it's not an exaggeration and Nelson and Ed, you guys have been in the fight far longer than I have. You were actually in the truth movement. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, know it's funny. You know what's funny? You talked about um, the, how the government's not even acknowledging, you know, the stuff we're doing, uh, or at least you guys are doing. And uh, however, I would say that they they are actually acknowledging it, except they're not put they're not acknowledging it in a way that actually puts the evidence together the way you guys have done it. Because all the information you guys are getting is a lot of it's come from their own their own mouths, their own sources, their own mm. their own information that they put out, but they're not putting it together the way you guys are. Yeah. They're not telling. They're not. They're telling a different narrative. They're selling a different. They're selling a different story. And what you guys have been able to do is 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 find a different story that's that seems to be more accurate than the ones they're actually providing. So, yeah, the mis yeah, I Ed, everything you said here is correct. I want to I want to get Nelson's points here. Look, the misconception is that because we mm -hmm. believe in hijackers, hijack planes, we agree with the official narrative. No, uh, we do. Yes, there were hijack and hijack planes, but there was a lot more. Now, with the fifth plane on TMZ, guess what? They don't even have to be Al Qaeda. And if we go by Al Qaeda's own words, saying, "Yeah, we selected 19 men, 19 fundamentalists," well. Who the hell are these people? Well, yeah. Now you open up questioning. Nelson put something unbelievably surreal, and I was waiting to go to work when I when I saw this, when I heard his voice message. And he says, hey, remember that manual that uh, Muhammad Atta made about um, washing the body or shaving the body clean? And in the film, the TMZ, and this is a great meticulous study of uh, Nelson that you made, <laughs> where, the, where, the, where the woman's wearing the burqa, and it's actually a guy. Yeah. And he has hair on his hands. Well, yeah. if we go by what Muhammad Atta wrote the night before about shaving the body, this guy didn't get the manual, or this guy's not Al-Qaeda. Who the hell are these people? Yeah. If this right? is supposed to be a war on Islam, then grab all the Muslims. Make you know, Take every single one that you're trying to blame to put on this conspiracy of 9-11 mm -hmm. and do it. But the government didn't do that. Why? Why are they covering up extra hijackings? You know? Why did they cover the Middle Eastern leak and the OKC bombing?
I wonder. It, you know, you, it has to give you a pause that, you know, because because there's such a huge backlash from people like Alex Jones and Fetzer and over these years. Oh, if you believe in hijackers, hijack planes, you go against this official narrative. To them, like I said before, the official narrative is basically 19 fundamentalists. They hate our freedoms and they hijack four planes and crash them into World Trade Center, Pentagon, and Shanksville. And I've always said, my God, you know, there's so much more to this a narrative that the government put out. But the narrative is not false. It's not all true. It's incomplete. And basically, that's true because I've interviewed some of the people on my show, like Ken Williams and Anthony Schaefer and Eric Kleinsmith, Mark Rossini. And they've all said, and these are all FBI official whistleblowers, you know, people that got in trouble. That's what a whistleblower is. Somebody <laughs> who blew the whistle on the road agency yes. and got in yeah. trouble. Yeah, not that's like what a whistleblower Honiger. is. Yeah. Not like Barbara Honiger. Trouble. She didn't get in trouble. Okay. Yes. And what happens is, is that they're telling on their own agency, hey, we didn't get all the information or we weren't allowed to share the information to warn the public or warn the agencies, hey, there's hijackers inside the United States. We need to start monitoring these people. No, they were ordered either to destroy the information or not to share the information on the threat of prosecution or even worse. Right. And what happens here? You get an incomplete story because that information is not in the public sector. And guess what happens? Two congressional inquiries. So you have the Joint House and 9-11 Commission. And to their own, the commission members, their own, they're, they're basically complaining. What do they say in 2003, 2004? Oh, we didn't get every all, all the information that we would like to have seen. And that's coming from the co-chairs. That's Bob Graham, Thomas Keene, Porter Goss, Lee Hamilton. You say what you want about them personally. I'm not going to get into that. But th th one thing is for certain, they didn't get all the information. And they complained about it in their own reports. So for those out there that say, oh, the official narrative is such and such, no, it's an incomplete narrative. Because if you read the night, because people like Alex Jones and Jim Fetcher don't want you to read. They want you to believe what they're saying. Don't do that. Take what they're saying. Look at what they're saying. Does it match up with the evidence? If it doesn't, you can't trust them as a worthy source. And that's all that me and Nelson and Ed have been trying for years to tell you is that, listen, you can't look at an investigation with a biased mindset and say, I know the government did 9-11. No, you have to look at a crime scene and basically prove, without a shadow of doubt, prove. Not speculate, not opine and say, oh, I know this. And... No, you have to show that certain elements were either involved with the crime or not. Yeah. If they're not involved with the crime, no matter it's Israel, Saudi Arabia, United States, or a combination of all three, you have to admit that that's that. And don't add to it. Because what you're doing is basically creating 9-11 in your own image. Evidence is the only thing that matters. And, uh, you know, I'm one, you know, naively believes that there's a sense of justice in all this. But um, if I don't believe that, then I don't know what, what, what am I doing here? Yeah, exactly. So, so what's your, what's the point of exposing? You're trying to get, you're trying to get, create solutions here too. I mean. Correct. They'll say, well, Jason, you don't believe this. So, you know, you question what happened at Shanksville or the Pentagon. So they found the DNA of such and such a hijacker here without them actually being on the plane. Then they, there is no case for that person. That's not true. I didn't, I'm not the one who said they found the DNA or was accusing these people. And by the way, the people they've accused, for instance, Khalid Al-Madar is a, is a big one because Khalid Al-Madar allegedly, according to James Woods, and you'll see him allude to that in this previous clip, because again, all the stuff we're going to talk about are, is open source information. Open source information. Okay. And now again, 20 plus years, we're learning about the fifth plane. There's a lot more than just the fifth plane, because what you did have is you appeared to have live hijacks. You had concurrent drills. Okay. Then you had phantoms. And the phantoms appeared to be hijacked aircraft. You also had aircraft in the air that were reported to have explosives on them that were then landed that did not. Yeah. That did not have hijackers on them either. Well, now, what's real? Right.
but you can stop right there. Okay, well, why did the commission report come, you know, boil it down to knife, you know, box cutters? If there are reports of bombs and all that, why is that there? You know, for him to cherry pick what is the cover up? You know, if this is all scripted and all pre made and all going to be a set narrative, we should not have any anomalous reporting. This is, I'm glad you brought this up, Nelson, because I'm going to play this clip. This was the clip that me and Nelson basically responded to. Before this, you were lost in the woods with, with me anyway. I can't speak for Nelson or Ed. All right. I'm only speaking for myself. I knew who you were and I know what you've done. And I was critical of Loose Change, a heavy critic. But I noticed that you were just a producer. You would not be the, the film's director. And you basically just came on later or something like that. Now, you came on the scene for me recently when you did this interview with um, uh, McDermott. And I'll play. Hey, all the evidence shows whatever happened there, something well, was out of the sky. They, they were not, the bodies were not intact. It was very... Well, again, man. I'm going to say it. There's not a time in history that a jet goes down in an open field and you don't have, you may have, uh, you know, people that don't have heads or are badly burned. You got the body, bro. You got maybe, maybe a torso was ripped. It's not like they're looking for fragments and they're not on the scene. If you could point to one other commercial plane crash where anybody yeah. who is a primary investigator and shows up and we've showed multiple says there's no bodies and no evidence of a plane, I will not only shake your hand, I will stop showing people those clips. And guess what happened? Me and Nelson actually did our own project and we responded to you. And we gave two different examples. And when we did this, you basically blocked him and you called me a troll. And not only that, you went on Reed Coverdale's show. And this was, I think, two years ago. This McDermott, uh, I think, was three years ago. Mm -hmm. Mine, you know, well, year or I'm more for yeah, year. yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. Okay, so to you, and you basically said that you'll welcome any challenge whatsoever. When we did this and we showed you the clips, that's how you treated us. We didn't treat you like I didn't, you know, I, I was only critical of Luce Jane, not to you. But when you did that, I I still extended a branch, an olive branch. I made a video on YouTube too, it's still up there. But then you basically just maligned us or ignored us altogether and then you went on to basically say oh um you know i i i'm open to all challenges no jason look we you know i know damn well you saw these videos because i even shared with you in private message on twitter because you didn't block me then and then um you didn't even respond and then later i think it was last year nelson we went mm -hmm. on uh ricky veranda's show we were invited yeah yeah no it was two years ago that was for the 19-year anniversary. It was Thank on the same time, yeah. And you basically came on, and when Nelson went to speak, you left. Because you didn't want to hear from us. And I'll still say it. You are not the enemy here. You never were. You're, you're I'm not even a detractor. We're trying to reach out and talk with you. Because I think, from me and my perspective, you're still worth saving. Because you're right there. You're right there. You talk about other things that even self-professed experts of 9-11 claim that uh, they're for the truth. Well, they're not. I think, in my opinion, and Nelson, I'd like to get your thoughts here, Ed, afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I could be wrong, I think you're tired of the same old repetitious, non-responsive attitude of the 9-11 truth, and you're just basically trying to hang on to people who are alleged to be truthers like Alex Jones when they're not, because mm -hmm. you may think that we might be critical of you or we basically won't accept you as is. I will. Uh, Nelson, Ed, what, what are your thoughts? Well, as far as, like uh, as far as what, uh, um, um, him being bored with this or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your response with Jason uh, overall with nine 11? I would probably imagine, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Ed even talks about this too. It's just like you, you have, I, I mean, if you're stuck in that narrative, you must be starved for information mm. because you must be stuck. Mm. I mean, I mean, endless trails, I mean, trails to dead ends. I mean, 
you 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 can't you can't escape out of that. You're you're stuck in that market into that niche. And Jones even knows it's a a market of conspiracy. You know, you know, Richard Gage calls it you know his brand of conspiracy. There's no brand of truth. There's no brand of truth. There's just truth. And we've mm. even ruined that word already. It means nothing now. <laughs> now we have to stick with facts. Facts. We can't even say truth. Mm -hmm. Ed, I I agree hundred um, percent. I think what happens is when you get when you build up uh, your when you build up your your public personality to such a degree that uh, and you and you build it on a foundation that is that is flimsy at best. You over time you have a very difficult. Uh, it becomes more and more difficult to keep your balance on that flimsy foundation, and um, so it's and it's it's. And I think you're right. He is starving for more information, but he's. I don't know if he's willing to do the work to get it. I think he is. He does. He does. But you do showed it. But you more. showed it. You showed it to him, and he rejected it. Well, I, 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 I think maybe because I'll have to blame myself here because. I was a little bit combative toward him after the McDermott video, and but now the TMZ thing means something different. Now the, the now it's, it's a game changer. Yeah, I, okay. I, I this is what Nelson and I I I think really game, that, we're dealing that, with a game change right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what words, we're. In other words, in other words, you think he'd open in the door? He has to. This is what me and Nelson would talk about yesterday. So we we think that with this new new uh, video by TMZ of all people. Uh, basically does open up the door to saying, hey, wait a minute, this goes against this official narrative or it goes against the, you know, the other fringe theories that are out there. And it basically questions that narrative. Who are these people? Where'd they come from? Um, how'd mm -hmm. they get on the plane? To me, that fifth plane TMZ thing answered some of the questions I wanted answered for years. And then the things are also going on geopolitically with Saudi Arabia too. That could <laughs> Correct. Save that. Let's just save that. For example, the the the, the latch plane to get on the bottom. I yeah. mean, that uh, to me, like it just leads to the theories of Ziad Jara, Flight ninety three. Oh, stuff. That, but, but that that that's but that you, Adam, that. you're talking about like you know you know he started off saying this is not new information. We're telling you right now. Oh my God, it's new information. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Right. It's new to uh, it's new to the truth community. That's for sure. Oh my God, Ed! I can't, I can't disagree with that. It's so illuminating. Yeah, right. It may have been, it may, it may, have, been yeah. it may have been sitting there forever. It may have been sitting there since night, right. since two, since uh, since the September twelfth, two thousand one. You know, <laughs> right, right. But yeah, but who's who's act, who's been acting on it? Right. Very few. Who's been acting on it? Right. Yeah. I pushed me and me and Adam have pushed it further because oh, yeah. we've looked and we looked at the news reports and we know about September thirteenth and that's good. Let me save that for later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but you into, know that, we that we, tells, we stretched it further than you was trying to say like you know what, uh, criticizing Bill Maher. No one's researched this for twenty years and you're raising your hand. No, you only did two minutes, dude. I did it in six hours. Even though I mm. and I I counted. I took every plane. I took every plane. I didn't just and how, and how I'm a, and I, you did in six hours. <laughs> that was the, that was the culmination of your research. But how long did it take you to do the research on it? Oh my right. god, years. Right. Yeah, years. it's like you years. spent you spent years on it. Yeah, yeah I and had then, two it, versions. I yeah. only did a three hour version because I could only get to September fifteenth. I had to yeah. do the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when yeah. Bill Maher says you can explain everything in an hour, that's why I was like, no, you can't. <laughs> they no, can't. You can't. Uh, and by the way, just to to, comp, to piggyback again off Nelson, six hours is not him talking. It's all right. news news vets right. of, of showing a right. chronological yeah. order. Yeah. Hey, it was here in this plane, this city, this plane, it, right on through. Easy for the eyes, easy to digest, even though, yes, six hours, but it shows an enormous amount of effort and work in regarding to look get all the potential possibilities a look of how many planes could have oh, been the cover up of it's huge the massive I, the, the amount ground of cover up here ground zero is nothing ground zero enormous. cover up is nothing in 9-11 nothing in, in the whole scheme of things yes just a scheme of things it's almost it's almost like it's almost like you have a it's like imagine a crime and you have this nice little house in suburbs and there was a mass murder going on inside the house 
and everybody's all the attention's on that mass murder. Mm. How this could happen? Who did it? Blah blah blah. Oh, here's here's potential suspects. Meanwhile, the person inside that house, one of the people inside that house, was connected to another thing over here where another crime was going on that was related that it was bigger than the actual mass murder happened in the house, but nobody's paying attention to that house, that, that crime. Yes. Because this, this yeah. crime over here is covering up the cover up happening right. over here. You know, that's a fantastic it's, that's, analogy. Yeah. That's no, there is. There, there's other, there's other ways to saying that. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great analogy, by the way. Really it is great. It is. About United 23. And you, it makes you question the whole entire thing. And it should. You know, so you should be looking at the hijackers. You should be looking at yes. the military ties. You should be looking at the fact that they were at military schools naming their addresses as those. Yeah, schools. stop. All right. Yeah, no, Ali what, Muhammad. What, what, Ali what, Muhammad. What, Ali Muhammad was in the military, and then you, and then after nine eleven, you have Ali. What was his name? Hassan or or the the, the Fort Hood shooter? What's his name? Oh, um. God's sakes. Isn't it Hassan or Ali? Isn't it? Yes. I, I Isn't it Ali it. Hassan, right? <laughs> so, I, I have to cheat. It's um, Nadal Hassan. Nadal yeah. Hassan. Nadal, yeah. Nadal, yeah. Uh, Nadal yeah. of all people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> right. Um, Any relation? Any, yeah. I, I mean, he, he's talking about he's talking about hijackers using the addresses on bases. I'm telling you of ones that actually get into the military and do basic training. <laughs> okay. Your address is going to be on a base. Whoopie do. <laughs> yeah. But, and mine and was, just, and just I to, can tell you what mine is. <laughs> <laughs> and just to add to that, Newsweek actually talked about this and said you could see here alleged hijackers may have trained at US bases. Let me explain what this is about, actually, because it does talk about um, Saeed Al Gamdi. Okay, yeah. Saeed Al Gamdi listed his address to a register at ninety eight uh, with a ninety eight Oldsmobile, and used it again to register his second vehicle. And he gave the address of this barracks. But by the way, just to let you know about this is that Arabs and I study Arab culture, is that. Arabs have similar sounding names. And this was a huge, and I don't want to get into this because Nelson covers this extensively, about how the hijackers are alive and they use these different names. For example, there's a there's a um Abdulaziz Al Amari, who's a hijacker on flight eleven. Remember the name, Abdulaziz Al Amari. Nelson, you know, deserves all the credit here because it brought, was brought to my attention that there was an Abdulaziz Rahman Al Amari who was actually a Saudi Arabian pilot. And if you want, if, if, I know he's done this memes on Twitter and Facebook for years. He actually has this great meme. It's the best meme, 9-11. To me, it's because it's informative. It shows a picture of Abdulaziz Alamari and Abdulaziz Rahman Alamari, and it shows a distinct di difference. That's the guy who called BBC and said, hey, my name is Abdulaziz Alamari, but his name is Abdulaziz yeah. Rahman Alamari. Yeah. There were two Alamaris for one Alamari. Right. And there may have even been a third with a slight al alternation. Name and guess too. who spread that rumor? Alex Jones and Jim Fetzer. That's yes. who did this. Because Jim Fetzer and Alex Jones went on. I, Nelson and, and Barbara Honiger is still repeating it to this yes, day. And, that's right. In 2004 or 2006, they had a conference. It's on C-SPAN. And Alex Jones is there. And um, uh, Jim Fetzer is there. And I think there was this conference of truthers. And this is the big Jim Fetcher clip, the 10 questions regarding the hijackers, and he used this, and Alex Jones is a background shape. Yes, yeah, that's right. No, that's the misconception. And so people don't look into the hijackers' backgrounds. They say, oh, these guys are still alive. Now, just imagine, the hijackers are still alive. How come no one's ever talked to one? That's right. How come the truth movement didn't go to Saudi Arabia just because they, hey, you know, why not? Because the BBC basically says in the article that these were people with similar sounding names to the hijackers. But that's yeah. not what Jones and Fetcher told you. They said, no, the hijackers are still alive. So getting back to my point about Sayyid al-Ghamdi, Sayyid al-Ghamdi was a person at this Pensacola uh, army base, but it was a different Sayyid al-Ghamdi. Sayyid al-Ghamdi in 1998 would have been 16 years old. It can't be him because he died. He was, I think, 22. Mm-hmm. 2001. So 
How could he have gotten a driver's license? He couldn't have. How could he have gotten a passport? He couldn't have. How could he have gotten a visa? He couldn't have. So, no, Jason, that's where I disagree regarding about them training at military schools. Um, but for them giving addresses, um, they went to, um, what's it called? I'm, I'm sorry, they went to um, uh, uh, English language uh, schools. Yeah, in Bonneray. I've been to that base because I, I had somebody with a new friend of mine who was in the Army, went, was there. Oh, the wow. language, okay. Yeah, the language school, yeah. Ah. Schools that they were in. Look at the connection to Maxwell Air Force Base, to Rudy Deckers. Well, the, I mean, hey, Rudy Deckers. Oh, he, yeah, he yeah, Rudy, yeah, Rudy Deckers. I mean, that's a whole different podcast. Yeah, yeah, but that's not his research. That's all, that's all, that's all Hopsicker. And that's yeah. where he, you know. Yeah, oh, Hopsicker's, uh, what, what, what's the name of that book? Um, Venus Venice Flying Circus. Yeah, what, and that, I love the little short film he did. Yeah. Good, good research. I that called good. on him. By his neighbor, Deborah Albrighton. That's right. Okay. And nothing's done. Why is that? Why is that? Nelson, you have that news These clip are big too. big questions. So that's really going to be the opener. It is we're going to go to Fabled Enemies. We're going to go to this part called Warnings and War Games. Please. And, and this is really going to show you, in my opinion, this shows 100% how the people on the inside of the United States that were a part of this, and there were people on the inside of the United States that were a part of this, use the drills not only to... Help See, I, 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 I hate to nitpick, but words mean everything to me. When you say the United States are part of this, what do you mean? Because if right. you're going to say that the United States is part of the 9-11 operation... You're making a very weighty charge, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm like I'm you know like you you could say this is my fault or you know this is a a slight on me. I'm completely meticulous, like I'm anal with certain things because I'm thinking of it like a courtroom, not like a hobbyist. I'm thinking of it like an investigator, not like somebody who's off the cuff and just you know doing it for clicks. Every word that you say means something. So when you make that charge, like, because, you you know, people are watching you, Jason. You have thousands of people that watch you. You're, you know, you're a relatively successful platform. And people hang on to what you have to say because they consider you an authority, right? So when you say that they're part of something, you have to be a little bit more specific. So in other words, you don't, what you're trying to do is not mislead your audience. Would I be wrong about that? No, it's a, it's a major pet peeve of mine. Um, when anybody, any, any, anytime anyone says, oh, the government did it, or the government's this, the government's that, the government is defined by our Constitution, and it cannot, by its very nature, do anything unconstitutional, illegal, et cetera, et cetera, because the, the U.S. government operates by official constitutionally constituted acts, mm. so anything outside of that no longer becomes the government. It's uh, these, these are individuals acting on our own behalf. Mm -hmm. And if you put box it into the government did it and you keep putting a label on it like that, yeah. you then you then allow permission to not look at who is actually you're talking about and actually do the work needed to pinpoint specifically mm -hmm. who is acting outside of the Constitution, who is acting outside of government and under color of law or maybe under color of authority and thereby uh, re thereby eliminating any possibility of putting any names and connections to the uh, the event itself. As a guide, basically. Yeah. It's about specifics here. And that's mm -hmm. all I'm interested in. I'm not, I don't care about vague terms. And I hear from Alex Jones all the time, New World Order, Illuminati, means nothing to me. Deep state. Yeah, deep state, stuff like that. We've been inundated in the truth movement for years with this, you know, meaningless slogans. I yes, want, it's, I it's want generalizations. More. Yeah, I want more. I want specifics because I want to hold people accountable. Yeah, it's accountable. a feeling. I don't want to hear about feelings. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't want. Right, I don't want to hear about feelings. I don't want to hear about you know. I, I'll play the small violin. No, yeah. uh, but I want more. I we all want more. So we're going to get ahead. 
You know, we, if, you know, this is the reason why Fox News back in 2005 and six interviewed Kevin Barrett. This is the reason why MSNBC interviewed Morgan Reynolds. Why? <laughs> because it showed the 9 11 Truth Movement as nothing more than a bunch of, you know, quacks. irrational quacks. And guess what happened? Now the media doesn't even talk to you. They did for you. But you had Dylan Avery and you had Corey Rowe and you talked about loose change and anomalies that basically talked about uh, that were repeated by Thierry Mason and still Barbara Honigan to this very day. But yeah. you didn't talk about this stuff because, you you know, when you say, oh, we knew about this stuff the years. Why didn't you do that when you had ABC News right in front of you? No, you brought up about Operation Northwoods. You brought up the Pentagon issue and you had your chance. Right. You weren't there, but Dylan Avery, Corey Rowe, they were there and they had their chance. Basically, you didn't repeat this stuff. They only did it in Fabled Enemies, but through, you know, with because people still remember you with loose change. You yeah. have to dissociate from that yeah. completely and say we got it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Michael Vero thinks that, it should take a lot of credit for Fabled Enemies anyways, yeah, too. Right. But but this is where he has to make the sad look. You're not going to get much in way of favor. A lot of people are going to call you names and call you a, you know, you're a sellout. Who cares? Like Nelson said, that's dead weight. And you're carrying that around for years. That's yeah. why I happen to think that I think that, that, that's, that's defamation. That's, that, that's the defamation narrative. You want to be part of that 1.5? <laughs> right. Well, does he want, like, I can't, I'm not him. So I'm, I'm well, this is the reason why we're doing a video. That's we're trying to reach out to you. Yeah. That's all. So Help facilitate the attacks, okay, but also to move individuals within intelligence and law enforcement agencies that were not, and plenty of them were not in on it, okay, and immobilize them from being on the scene and possibly being a whistleblower later on. That's how deep and dark it gets. So here we are again. TMZ broke the case, guys. United 23. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, and I mentioned this. The luggage that was left behind, right, with this United 23 case had all the same things that they magically found in Otta's luggage that didn't make it onto uh, the first plane 11. Well, if that was, the, this, again, Nelson gets the credit here. If that was the case, then the person in the burqa would have shaved their arms and hands. Just yeah. like the other hijackers did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. And what we found out from the special was we didn't find bags. Um it, they, they, it wasn't even an issue of that. It's weapons found on a wholly different, totally different plane. It's yes. Yes. This is this and, is and how TMZ are still trying to reduce that into one plane still. And I'm telling yeah. you, no, that's probably another right. plane. <laughs> a second plane. CNN <laughs> even reported, and we have the articles. And uh, basically report finding knives and box cutters on the backs of food trays and other planes in other cities. Yeah. And other Thompson, weapons. Greater Paul weapons. Thompson wrote about this in the terror timeline. Yeah, greater weapons than knives. Guns and we've heard. Yeah, guns things. bomb on one plane September 13th. God's sakes. And Almadar was supposedly on 11 in the summer before with several others, but he's not supposed to be there. That's according to James Woods. So many anomalies. And now that you know your government will straight up bald face lie to you, okay, lie to your ass without a moment, boom, a smile. Sure, did. Look what they did the last several years. They think they were Betty better 20 years ago. Oh, no. Oh, no. They might have put a little bit of a better face on it. But it was also the birth of the internet, of the actual true information age. Where people Stop right now. there for a second. Or yeah, yeah, like the, the whole part where he talked about the government with bullface lied to you. He, he had a perfect opportunity right there to uh, talk about you know to George Tenet and the hearings and uh, uh. all that. You know that was a perfect opportunity to, to give a real example of an actual bullface lie that would be provable right there in the moment. Boy, thank you, Ed. <laughs> yes. I and he missed the opportunity. Man. And it's him lying before the joint house inquiry. Yes. 
committing perjury. Not once, twice. Right. Twice. We didn't read the cable. That's mm -hmm. one. It was an information. It was an information only cable. I know we didn't read that cable. Fifty agents, fifty officers in the CIA's counterterrorism center. Not one, not two. Fifty. What like fifty-seven or something like that? So I think it was fifty-five, fifty-seven. I can't. I, yeah. I don't remember. But over fifty. All right. Knew that Khalid al Bidar and Nawaf Hazmi, two known Al Qaeda agents, according to the CIA, were coming to the United States. And they had dual U.S. visas. FBI read the cable, Doug Miller, who is an FBI agent out of New York, on loan to the CIA's Bin Laden issue station, codename Alex Station, went to write a draft report saying, hey, we got two known Al-Qaeda operatives with links to the 1980s Africa bombings and the USS Cole, and we need to start monitoring these people. But they need the CIA permission. CIA doesn't get permission. That order came from the deputy chief of Alex Station, Tom Wilshire. And he told his liaison officer, Michelle Ann Casey, thank you, Ray Nolowski and John Duffy, she told Mark Rossini, who's an associate of Doug Miller, also on loan from New York Counterterrorism Center, and told him, you're not allowed to share that cable without our information. We think the next attacks are in Southeast Asia. We'll let the FBI know when they need to know. So they can't share this information. And it's 16 months later, so August 2001, and then later on when the 9-11 commissions happened, George Tenet goes before the commission, commits outright lies, basically says, nobody read that cable. Did the truth moment jump on it, like Ed said? Not a peep. The only person who did talk about it, the only people were the following. Paul Thompson, Kevin Fenton, Ray Nowitzki, and John Duffy, John Gold, nobody else. And, ever, and other people in this room right now. Yes. Now, recently, yeah. Now, no, nobody talks about this. No, because you know why? Because you don't read the, the 9 11, not you, Jason, but they don't read the 9 11 Commission report. They don't read the Joint House Inquiry, right? Because if you don't read anything, you don't know anything and you can't give your thoughts on anything. All you have to do is say the official story is a lie, 9 11 Commission report is all a lie. So that's where you don't have to read anything and point out specifically what's a lie, what's a truth, or whatnot. You don't have to, in other words, what Ed and Nelson were saying previously. You don't do the work. Yeah. Now, Jason, you did. This is the reason why we're doing this video. You did. And you're right there. I st I still have hope for you. Like, you're going to, you're right there. Yeah. Only reason why we're reaching out to you. I mean, did the 9 11 Commission report lie when they said they found no evidence of Saddam or Iraq involved in the 9 11 attacks? Yes. Great example. Because Bush didn't like that. Right. He, he, he profoundly made a big issue about that when the report came out. He was against it. But you guys only want to worry about the fucking buildings. But, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's such... When you guys talk about Ground Zero, and I'm not... This is because it's part of 9-11. I know, but it is. Only... You know, like, like, I know somebody... I'm not going to use his name. Nelson and Ed know who I'm talking to. When you have somebody that invested and stays at Ground Zero and doesn't rise above the ashes and doesn't look at 9-11 in the respect yes. it deserves, well, you're missing, out, you're missing out on so much more. Those who fight. say they will die on that hill. <laughs> oh, man. Go beyond the mainstream and start to explore what the evidence actually showed and yes. the talking points and the spin that was continually regurgitated via the networks, right? I might even play because yesterday, if you stuck with us premium style, and, and by the way, I think it's over on my Twitter. Uh, there's four more episodes uh, premium style, all free now at redvoicemedia.com. That's why you follow me at Jason Burmis on Twitter. And you can just go through, click them all. They're free. Yesterday's premium, I, I mean, I actually got a text uh, from one of my buddies that was listening, and he said it was great. And look, I, I, I never know what's going to come across to the audience. I, I just do my thing. I talk about stories I think are important. I show evidence I think is important. Because 9-11 is the crux, right? To this day, our entire foreign and domestic policy is based on that terrorism. Word. You're, more, you're a domestic <laughs> terrorist. You're a Muslim terrorist. You're an Antifa terrorist. You're a white supremacist terrorist. Terror, terror, terror. Let's terror, stop. Terror. 
And, the, and the he's whole, so uh, close. But but he's right. He's right. But yes. Jason, those days are gone. Yep. You got Trump in office. Okay. Things changed. There we have to accept that now. It's 2023. Move on. <laughs> the, yeah, Al Qaeda is no longer a threat. We no longer have that like that religious fundamentalist terrorist threat. We've now re-entered the Cold War. This is how this is how far gone we've gone from the 9-11 truth movement, right? We can't use this anymore. The terrorism threat is now us, the American people. Yeah. Yeah. January 6th, as I, I forgot who coined the term, was worse than 9 11. Yeah. And, 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 how did, and, how did the, and how did the January 6th come about? How, how did the QAnon come about? Because of what? The result of cult conspiracies. Thank you. Yes. Not one of those people that were at, at January 6th, I would say 75% of them, I guarantee you, know that a third building fell on 9 11. <laughs> yes. And, they yeah. weren't there for that. Those are the a people. Third building, that, a third building fell on 9-11? You didn't know that? Oh, I, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, Nelson, uh, that is, uh, look, the people. And, 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 and the guy, and your, your former boss happened to be one of the leaders, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, he just happens to be there with a bullhorn. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. The people who raided the, the Capitol are the very same people who helped to destroy the 9-11 truth movement. That's who the United States labels as terrorists. You, me, right? By default. And that's exactly, you. like I said, you are right there. You know it. And guess who made that memorandum to change about what is labeled a terrorist or an enemy combatant? Well, it was in November 2001 when President Bush went on vacation and left Dick Cheney there to basically rewrite with White House legal counsel like uh, Attenborough, David Attenborough, and John Yu and uh, Gonzalez, Alberto Gonzalez, that's Cheney's lawyer, basically rewrote the Department of Justice memo saying that the president now is the sole authority on naming or labeling people enemy combatants, terrorists. Guess who he named as terrorists? You. Me. Not the thousand people he had round up in jail at, at the New York right. Metro and everywhere else. Not those. Not when they not when he was even asked. Not when even when Ashcroft was asked on September 17th. You know, are you gonna label these people, you know, enemy combatants to hold them indefinitely? No. And when, and by the way, I'm glad you brought that up because when Dick Cheney wrote rewrote that memo with B Bush's approval, basically he left out of the loop the Secretary of State Colin Powell, the set uh, the National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice, and the Attorney General John Ashcroft. And when they all found out, it was much too late because surrounding Dick Cheney at the White House were his legal counsel who who rewrote the memo concerning that the president now has sole authority on labeling enemy combatants. The most important. One of the most important pieces of legislation written that was not brought up even by the 9 11 truth movement, which I'm not surprised, but also by the mainstream media. I wonder why. Because you are the, which now we're the terrorists. And guess what? 20 years later, who got arrested? All Americans on January 6th. They're overthrowing the government. Imagine a bunch of ragtag budgets who look like, you know, straight out of the Tommy Wiseau film are going to are gonna take over the government. Right now, I disagree with the point that they went there because they overthrew election. Now, if they would have went there on real pretenses, like saying, "Oh, uh, maybe these COVID uh, lockdowns are draconian," or they're giving out too little on these stimulus checks, guess who you would have had on your side? Those idiots of the left, right? You would have had a combined movement where together you work together on a common cause to keep government honest. No, you alienated yourselves. You create a further divide in the public sphere. And guess what happened? Now nobody takes you seriously. Same thing for the left. Keeps the divide growing and nobody takes you seriously, except for the United States government, who considers all of us the enemy. And until you get through, through your head, stop voting for left and right politics, because there's no such thing in the greater scheme of things. They're all in, you know, when it comes to the more important issues, like geopolitics and foreign lobbies, like Israel or the Gulf. 
or giving more money to the CIA, the NSA, and, and the Pentagon, and giving more money to wars like Ukraine and Yemen. Well, guess what? Those law, those regu- uh, leg- legislations and proposals are voted unanimously. So there's never any left and right uh, paradigm here. No divisive issues. Only except when it comes to Social Security, health care, and you know, stuff that it's internal. Then there's a left and right because it keeps you divided. That's the whole point. 9-11, the new movement for 9-11, if it's ever going to come, has to come from people like you, Jason Burbis, and ourselves in admitting that we had uh, information that wasn't at our disposal, we're trying to fight for, and getting rid of the unnecessary you know, disinformation. But you're going to have to, you're gonna have to admit that much. Point of that is to take away your constitutional rights your due process it's extremely frightening Mm. and they've certainly played the long game with it so yesterday we played fort dietrich and biological warfare and you know the old military reel and then kind of the realization of what's actually happening and where it's happening and believe me you know they they talk about that industry you know being there I, i believe it's in franklin or whatever in that community, but it, they are doing crazier things underground in black facilities and sites, and have been what does that since mean? World War II. One hundred percent. We can't even imagine the horrors. By the way, just to add, add Nelson, have you ever seen the video Jason Burbis did? You do you guys Nelson knows this name? I think Ed maybe Nico Haupt. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've heard the name. I don't know. I I, I... he's one of the very he, first like yes. real, like total physical no planer, like hologram yes. TV. Yes, yeah. I know you're talking about yeah. Jason did a very good video. I saw this about Nico Haupt and this experiment that he did with the CIA. And involved this underground, like we did, and it's he, he has video of this. This video of this. You ever seen it, Nelson? No. I will share that with you. And boy, uh, that's something. Else. I thought that was a very good video by Jason. Okay, we can't imagine some of the technologies. I'm going to talk about quantum computing today. I get a long list of uh, stories that I do want to hit on top of. This 9-11 issue, but this 9-11 issue, obviously extremely important to me. Because it's crazy to me that these guys can sit up there and act like nobody talked about this before. Nobody, Information nobody was available does. almost immediately. But there was one narrative to go down. You notice that narrative management, that great narrative that we all, again, all got the last several years? And 9-11 was was much different in a sense although there was a feeling of global outside of you being directly at new york city yes your life was a little different you weren't standing on stickers you weren't putting on masks Mm. you weren't asked to do all sorts of things on behalf of hate and lies and shut your business down No, no 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 instead it was like it was something you could direct at oh they told me the guy with the, with the funny hair and, and the and the hat there and the robe, he did it. Osama bin Laden, OBL, get him. You know, t- hold on a minute here. I, I listen. You know, I I'm, I'm just going to share this one video. That's it. It's it's not long. It's I think it's seconds long and whatnot. And you know, this is from you know I I just I'm, I'm just going to play this short little video, um, where um. I, I, again, this is coming from their own mouths, okay? Mm-hmm. From their own mouths. And I, I just wanted to hold on a minute here. I'm not saying that bin Laden, you know, was the sole reason behind 9 11. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed pitched the idea to bin Laden if we're going to believe his words, right? But this is all source coming from their own words. And I just want to play this small one video. Where basically Dr. Iman Al Swahiri is sitting next to bin Laden. These are not doubles. Listen what he has to say. And this is the great event that has been achieved. In the fact, it is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ليس بمهارة منا ولا حيلة ولا تفوق إنما هو محض فضل الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى يختص برحمته من يشاء والله سبحانه وتعالى ينظر في قلوب عباده ويصطفي منهم ما ما يكون أهلا لفضله ولرحمته ولنعمه فهؤلاء الإخوة التسعة عشر الذين خرجوا وبذلوا وقدموا أرواحهم في سبيل الله من الله سبحانه وتعالى عليهم بهذا الفتح الذي نتمتع به نحن الآن والناظر في أحوال هؤلاء الإخوة يرى أنه يعني لا مقارنة بين قوة تسعة عشر رجلا وبين قوة أمريكا ولا تناسب بين قوة تسعة عشر رجلا وبين الخسائر التي حدثت في أمريكا ولكن اللجوء إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى والاستعانة به والتوكل عليه يفتح لك فتوحا أنت لا تعرفها والله سبحانه وتعالى يدلك وييسر لك ويقويك ويمدك بل ويدلك في نفسك على كنوز وعلى موارد وعلى قوة أنت. That's from Al, that's from the media website. Al Qaeda runs a media website called As Sahab Media. Years ago, I downloaded these videos when you were able to. Now yeah. they're only archived on archive.org. But even you know when you go to archive.org, there's hardly anything left. Even I got lucky. I downloaded these videos right away. But you know, here's here you have you know a top a top uh, email of Al Qaeda basically suggesting uh, asserting that. You know, these 19 brothers basically carried out these attacks. Now, bin Laden is also stating, you know, to Taysir al-Awani of Al Jazeera about the attacks and how they benefited al-Qaeda greatly. And I have video with Ramzi bin al Sheikh meeting with bin Laden in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and it's on Odyssey. Go watch yeah. that. Okay? Well, well, the thing is, you, you got to understand uh, the way Burma is presenting that whole thing about, like, you got to get him this whole bin Laden narrative is really simple. Look at his age. I mean, how old it was when 9-11 happened. And uh, look at the, re re uh, you know, look at the fact that he would have been like, you know, 14, 15, you know, when the uh, East Africa embassy bombings happened. He wouldn't give a shit about that. Like, what the hell would he be known back then, you know? And, you know, from that point, maybe he wasn't really watching the news. So he didn't really hear this whole Bin Laden hype. We heard this. I paid attention. I, I paid attention to the East African embassy bombing. I mean, I was in my mid-20s already, you know. And, you know, I thought it was freaky. And, yeah, that's when we start. That's when I started hearing about him. So when 9-11 happened, I knew this is like, well, not that I believe that he completely masterminded or, or, or you know, I knew that was the person to blame already automatically because he had already been this threat told for us for like three years already he obviously didn't and we're not saying that you know bin laden and al-qaeda is the sole blamer of 9-11 but this is this is something i shared now there was a late uh researcher michael collins piper that basically said that and this is something i totally agree with is that 9-11 was an Arab plot, but the Israelis and Americans got wind of the plot and manipulated it. Well, that's my whole thesis, is that 9-11 was created by Khalid Sheikh Mohammed bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. They have, they're already doing the work. Now, if you go back, don't look at Northwoods, Jason. Look at Bajinka. Something that you barely ever mentioned, yeah. if at all. Even, even, and, even when he samples uh, Philippine Colonel uh, yes, Manzola. Even I, though... I, even though he brings that up and then he doesn't, you know, it's like, yes. well, yeah, the warning signs are there. Like, yeah, NORAD trains because they have to train against Bojinka. Yes. I couldn't believe he played those clips, right? And that comes up in this video. Yeah. I, I was in That's shock. why we don't really need to go over that part, really. <laughs> yeah, because anyway, like outside of us, um, nobody really talks about this stuff, right? Ben and Eric do. I mean, the kids at Project New American Century, but they're like, you know, they're new. But back in the truth movement days, nobody was talking about Pajinka, right? But huge, right? If you have somebody who's willing to do the heavy lifting, all you need to do is make sure that they do the work and it's not interfered with. Yeah. That's what I believe in. CIA, NSA, listening to the phone calls of these people, okay? Oh, wait a minute. They're talking about these attacks and they're using these specifics. They're using planes as weapons. Let's make sure that these planes actually get off the ground and hit where their targets is. Is that so much as an irrational speculation? No, I don't think so. 
because I think that's exactly what happened. Now, can I prove it? No, I don't have like documentation for it. But what we do have in in the historical uh, record is that you have the NSA and the CIA listening to these phone calls of bin Laden and a house in Yemen, which was an Al Qaeda communication zone. What do you think Al Qaeda was talking about in those phones? They're not going to be like us, you know, talk about trivial, mundane things in life. These are serious men that want to commit attacks. Yeah. And if you already have five years prior, but Jake is five years prior, six years prior to 9 mm -hmm. Six, yeah. What do you, how do you think they could, be, if you want to believe that the World Trade Center was outfitted with bombs, well, they knew about World Trade Center being a target five years ago. And they took, and if we go by the narrative that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed uses, and by the way, before he was tortured, he gave an interview yeah. to an Al Jazeera reporter in 2002, mm -hmm. him and Ramsey, and Ramsey bin Al Sheikh. So they weren't tortured yet. And I've interviewed the guy who wrote the book, Nick Fielding, who's friends with Yoshri Fuda, who met them and said, Yeah, we did this. It's like, and the intelligence agencies knew about these guys mid 90s. I mean, look, Millennium Plot. Why is Ahmed Rassam taking bombs to LAX? Well, the authorities want you to tell to think that, well, they're just going to bomb the airport. No, they're going to get on board planes. So if that's happening in the West Coast, gee. What do you think is happening on the East? It's, yeah. Why do you think James Woods, who you mentioned, saw Muhammad Atta? Because were he was seen at Atlanta. Right? I think Atlanta now. He was yeah. in Atlanta. Months yeah, yeah. prior exactly. to 9 11. Take they did Atlanta a lot. Georgia was used a lot. Yeah. A lot of movement through there. Yeah. And uh, I'm Even with the Israeli moving companies. Sorry. Right. No, no. <laughs> no. Now you're going into exactly. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. Right. Yeah, but yeah, it's true. Right. Yeah. Right. Israel, Israeli moving front company, arts student rate. Where were they? In the, it just so happened to be in the same spots as Al Qaeda <laughs> and the hijackers. Same spots. That's all. Turn all of Afghanistan and uh, can't speak too much truth here, Pakistan, Nelson. So I don't care all of it into a glass parking lot. What? True. Huh? Yeah. We have people like. But it was an easy answer. Uh, the, the way that that went down. Okay, the way that that went down was very movie script like. It was made for television. True. It was in that sweet spot. Where the internet was alive, but video content um, was highly compressed. It wasn't widely available. The internet was more than just social media. And certainly, we hadn't gotten to apps yet, right? Hadn't gotten to apps yet. So you knew you were going to get shots of everything from the planes to the... Uh, Explosion, especially in New York City, where the most densely populated city in the world, people constantly having cameras. They knew they were going to get that shot there. Now, with D.C., it's interesting because there's another heavily populated city, but it seemed, we, there are 70-plus videos that show something somewhere. Forget about the surveillance videos. Okay, <laughs> well, there, is Jason questioning that? Oh, my God, it's so controversial. Just saying okay. that the, the videos exist. We've never seen them. I wonder why. You're talking about the McGuire Declaration, uh, uh, the the document, which I'll quickly show real quick. Right, this is the um, uh, the declaration that was filed under a FOIA request by Bingham, Mark B uh, Scott Bingham, and as you can see here, this is the this is that declaration. And you could see it says Jack Lloyd McGuire was an FBI agent out of Washington, D.C. that was talking, uh, that was investigating the attacks at the Pentagon um, and Shanksville. And as you could see, that she does name like other videos and stuff, but it does, and she goes into detail. Um, and I'll put this in the description for you to read so that everybody can read it. And it just shows it's a, like out of the 13 videotapes, which right. did show the Pentagon crash site. 12 you know nobody's going to read that. You know nobody's going to read that. Somebody, <laughs> well, you know what? I have to have faith that somebody will. I know. Right? But I'm, I'm providing the information sure. anyway, no matter sure. what. But as you can see, I determined that only one videotape showed the impact of 77 into the Pentagon. And guess what happened? That one videotape, nobody believed it anyway because it didn't show the whole plane going 500 miles an hour at the same time mm -hmm. because it was a frame-by-frame -frame rate. 
Yeah, it wasn't a pan. It wasn't a Hollywood panning shot from uh, you know, from from, from across the field into the Pentagon and with the right. jib dolly and with the jib and everything else. So it was like, yeah, nobody's gonna right. believe it. And you would know about these guys. You work with cameras and stuff. By the way, they also interviewed the guy who pulled the videos. Um, and I can't think of their names right now, but they they the uh they interviewed them, and they talked about the different date at the bottom of the video, September twelfth, and you know the truth movement said, oh you see you know this happened September. No, that's the date that they ripped the video from. So how could they not fucking hello? <laughs> I mean, God's sakes. Yeah, never seen them. And last year we got Scott a Pennington. New, uh, that video. Was one. Scott Pennington yeah. was one. Okay. Yeah. one of one of the planes hitting the Second World Trade Center. So, so I'm just saying that the vast majority of information was managed in a way that probably couldn't be done now. And the other thing about today is video editing software, and people are so good now that, you know, I still see these fake people send me these fake videos from over a decade ago. The video they didn't want you to see of something, they're terrible, right? They're awful. But these days, they wouldn't be as awful, and they'd be a lot harder to debunk. All right. He's right. But listen, I've said it time and again. I didn't need video to know what happened at the Pentagon. A hundred somewhat people who were in the vicinity of Arlington City saw a plane descend over the Ronald Reagan International Airport, over that freeway, I forgot the name of the freeway, and head right into the Pentagon. Not only that, we had plenty of plane debris. And still, to this day, Jason, I have people telling me 22 years later that all those people are lying, that they might even be crisis actors, and that all that plane debris was magically just implanted under tons of debris at the Pentagon, like the landing gear. All that was actually done in broad daylight, and nobody saw this. And if there's other video out there that show a plane in the Pentagon, I want to know how many people in the truth movement who are no planers would actually believe that and say, oh, you know what? That's the government showing that, you know, they, they put the plane in there. They wouldn't believe it because they have it in their head that they go down this route and they can't admit their mistakes or that they're afraid they might agree with official narrative. But by the way, the name of the uh, gate technicians were uh, Brian Austin and Steve Peddington. Steve, thank you, Ed. Thank you. Very, that's right. They worked. They worked with uh, uh, Radion Radion Corporation. Oh, is that right? And uh, yeah, and uh, that was well. The employer was Radion Incorporated, and now called DRS Radion. Oh, well, thank you, team chief. Thank you for that. Right. Yeah. We did our 15, 16 minute rant of the day before we get into the video but here it is um i'm gonna jump to it let's get to that fabled enemies sweet spot let's see creative abilities on that morning here it is i saw fabled enemies yes we're gonna do the whole warnings and war game section that's what we need to do yeah we probably should just get to the uh yeah you want me to fast forward or something yeah, because this is what this is the area I think you already covered already. Yeah, it's not it's not relevant to the twenty twenty three. Right. So yeah, I get to the part where he's when he finally gets a to flight twenty three because we don't want to keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. So, before oh, that, right. more, more, no, before 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 that. that. Yeah, right before right he gets to where you see Tim Minton. No, 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 no forward, no. Go back, go forward, go forward, go forward. Right about there, there, there. Right, you, right, right, right about right, here. Right there. Yes, right here. Yes. Airlines aircraft also had pre-placed weapons on them. All right, this is a setup from all around. Hit yeah, pause, pause. A U.S. Yes, sure. says sure. pause right there. Okay, what he just talked about right there was the Time Magazine uh, inside job. This is the like you know, and I I, I covered this on, on Boston Logan 9/11 more in depth as I read the whole thing. But Jason's not pointing out that this is really specific. I mean, this is on Logan Airport. And he just wondered, you know, um, why they won't show re release video of the airport. Well, based upon those anomalous details, which could be hijackers getting in, boarding in as other ways besides as passengers, 
that would give you a reason why they want to, wouldn't want to give you the video, you know, mm. release the security video. Mm. But yet they, the reasons are right there in front of him. And he's just over his head, completely, you know, not seeing it, you know. Yeah, this is the this is the point I was raising before. Yeah. About they, 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 on this article, close. they talk about that they were they were already uh, questioning FBI's questioning catering people at the airport and all that. You right. know, like Hussein Al Husseini, John Doe number two, because this is the same airport that they're pointing out. So you know, this this article is not attributed to JFK Air, Airport, even though this is what's going to segue into. He's right there. Yeah, he's right there. He's right there. Look like inside jobs. Sources tell Time that U.S. officials are investigating whether the hijackers had accomplices deep inside the airport's secure areas. Well, don't want to leave security oh, video. Like 20. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Hello? Gee, I wonder why. The funny thing is, there is video. Yeah. And us three in this panel actually have access to additional video at the Pentagon, at Dulles, that yeah. the public hasn't seen yet. <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. Three. Yeah. As bad as things were on Tuesday, there is a possibility that they could have been even worse. There was some kind of an altercation involving three men described by a Port Authority of New York and New Jersey police source as Middle Eastern in appearance. They attracted the suspicions of the gate staff boarding that flight. They had already gotten on the plane. They're asked to leave the aircraft. They refuse to get off. The airline, following its normal procedures, according to this police source, calls the police, which immediately dispatch an emergency service team. So now you have a squad of heavily armed officers that are coming toward the airplane. And when they get there, the men have vanished. The gate staff can't find them. It matches with the type of flights, the transcontinental flights that were hijacked in the other four instances. Another disturbing fact, if indeed there was an altercation and these men felt they had a case to make and were being treated unfairly, you can't imagine they would have disappeared from the airport. They would have stayed around and, and pled their case with the police. It right. is extraordinarily unusual to have an airline after it has boarded passengers be so suspicious that it's going to ask these customers to get off the airplane. Let me just stop this. I would be remiss if I didn't say, you know, I was able to do this film. The only reason I was able to do this film was because of Alex Jones. Okay. That this is the first time I'd broken away from the loose change guys. I needed somebody to produce this and their tagline is tomorrow's news today okay t t tomorrow's news this tmz investigative piece just came out 15 years later now what you're looking at is an interview that lower and by the way there's more we're going to continue with united 23 we're going to do this chapter because it's so damn important okay <laughs> it's mind-blowing <laughs> it took 15 years for the media to even look at this. And this is from the week of 9-11. And there's so Steve, much more. Week. And, 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 and meanwhile, Bill Maher, so I can't believe people for the last 20 years didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason, two different subjects here. He's talking about World Trade Center 7. And we're talking about additional hijacked planes. I told you, but see, that's the, that's the issue. It's, it's far, you know, Bill Maher is, you know, he's really pissed off about that. I mean, he's, and I can understand to some degree when you hold certain people that you should, they should be, you know, quick mm -hmm. to it. But when you're offering them this big cult conspiracy behind it, they're not going to, they're not going to look into your stuff. But, yes. uh, yeah. but the thing is, is this, he said, you know, this, on the week of 9-11, no, Jason, this news report has a date. Where you got this news report, I have to wonder, because from the stories of loose change, we're told that you bought a lot of news archives on VHS from eBay because there were people who had just recorded all the, all the freaking news. Okay, well, I would imagine maybe this came from somebody who was recording NBC News straight for several hours, maybe all day, and you're saying within a week. Okay, because... 
This report here from Tim Minton from NBC with Matt Lauer is from September 13th, the morning of. And there's a lot of things going on that day. Like, for instance, the airports are about to reopen. <laughs> and right. um, a, right. dis, a, despite that, what, you know, Norman Mineta is about to give the clearance, there's lots of people, especially NBC News, that are making taking issue and saying, oh, 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 hold up, hold up. You may not want to open up those airports. We don't. These 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 new added measures you're just quickly putting in are just old measures we've been talked about and have used before. You may need to do something. Your 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 you know your entire security could be completely compromised. This may not just be the passenger security issue. And boy, were those people right. And even Andrea Mitchell was one of those people. You know, she's a big you know establishment you know hack and. She was right, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that happened. And so the and point, so the point being is, is that how do you get this report? Because you know he isn't the only one that reports it. Later on that day, Dan rather talks about it. A couple other reports, but when they talk about it, all of a sudden, five hours later, after airports are starting to take off, planes are starting to take off, the airports in New York and in New Jersey start shutting down especially at JFK Airport, which, yet again, for some reason, they get reports that uh, there's hijacking attempts and there's people arrested with pilot IDs and and uh, all kinds of airport, what they call the paraphernalia in one, re one report, but all this, all this, this, you know, disguised gear, a woman mm. is also arrested mm -hmm. between LaGuardia and New Jersey Airport. Even a woman in LaGuardia as well, too. And we even find out reports. Some of the some of the news reports even indicated that they they arrested the people at LaGuardia Airport because uh, they were seen at nine, uh, seen at that airport on 9-11 trying to get through security and they beeped and they turned around and left. <laughs> and then they were seen at the airport again. So, you know, you would be wondering if you're looking for this whole thing with Flight 23 and the airports are being the same airports being shut down again. Well, golly gee. Uh, you think they may have caught them? Because this is something TMZ didn't do. They didn't. They didn't indicate that this is a whole other door opener. You know, they don't even want to show to even reveal how vulnerable things were. You know, they'll they'll tell you that yeah, there may have been a dozen or so planes on 9/11, but they don't even want to remind you like yeah, but they still kept going. <laughs> yeah, right. They, yeah, it was just a, it was like a was, take two. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I keep in mind too. This was a this this would have been September thirteenth. It would have been at a time when the security was hyper hyper alerted. Mm. So when you're you just had a big terrorist attack in U.S. history, and now you're op reopening two days later, and uh, so your security is going to be incredibly enhanced, incredibly present, and you just mentioned the uh, emergency services team being. Uh, be responding to that incident um you know a, a funny uses uh, emergency servicing because that's what i was a member of when i was at travis air force base when i was in the military um and they called us the emergency services team so we were the guys who actually stormed aircraft and stuff but it was uh i didn't, I didn't know they had that in the civilian sector which i thought was kind of interesting um so yeah so it's very very uh yeah you would have had a very heightened sense of security on those days um so the chances of catching more people would have been much greater much greater right that's a really good point by the way and they yeah. did like nelson points out they did they you know yeah. and all, by the way all those people deported so we couldn't so, we couldn't investigate them so i question you jason did you have news reports at your disposal because you had these on 9 13 i know what date this is did you have news reports at your disposal from the afternoon of september 13th indicating hijackers were being shut down and closed and if you knew about those reports, why, oh, why, oh, why have you never put that in any of your films? What? Hey, Bill. Exactly. <laughs> and then they tagline it at the end with, well, there could have been a sixth plane or a seventh. Hey, pay attention. They That's already what I'm asking. showed you the one <laughs> looking like it was coming from uh, Alaska as, as the sixth plane. And I just showed you two Delta aircraft that had <laughs> weapons on them. As seven and eight, I just... Oh, Nelson, that brings up that story. You know this more than I do, because it was yeah. brought to you by my, my attention. The guy celebrating in the Canadian plane. 
with the with the bottle of water. Oh, Al, Al, ha Al Hamdi or Al Haiti. Al yes. Haiti. I, that's that that's that's connected. We're going to talk talk about that because that, that's all connected to Nabil Narab. That's all part of Nabil Narab. He had his phone yeah, number. Okay, on right, him, right. All right. Right. Yeah, right we don't right, want to right. go into that, but I think what I think the point you'd want to go into is because you just said Delta is is that you know Delta 1989. Yeah. Exactly. You know, why would you? You and then you know I, it's like it's like you have these things at your disposal. Well, then you also have grounded on 9/11 at your disposal. Okay, but you went ahead. And you told everybody that Flight 93, you know, landed in Cleveland and was mistaken as Delta 1989 because there was, a, you know, a, a rumor of it being a hijack. And you you switched the dates and you you added this bogus idea that, you know, every, you know, there was 200 people, you know, the, the, the equivalence of all four planes hijacked on 9-11, you know, basically on, on this Flight 93 that's landing in Cleveland, that everybody's getting offloaded into a NASA facility you know, God forbid what else what else happens. But of course, that's where you get the idea with Art Olivier when he comes up with his movie Operation Terror. Oh, that's basically God. the idea. He's, he's ripping it off from basically that. So you get that. But if you look at the report and, and the grounded on 9-11, they indicate that, yeah, that the cops showed up and, and it was, they said they had unruly passengers on that plane. And that plane took off from Boston Logan the same time, right in between Flight 11 and 175. Okay, so why would you ignore that? That's a six. Well, no, there's plenty more. But, you know, you cherry pick that to facilitate a hoax. Because what was really happening was, was that the reason why people got confused is because momentarily, as... Delta, 18, not Delta 1989 was a suspicious aircraft because of unruly passengers. It was flying alongside near Flight 93, Flight 93, which was already known. They already knew something was up. So this is why they had a mix-up. And, you know, all of a sudden Flight 93 turns around where Delta ended up going straight and goes into Cleveland. So that was part of the mix-up. And it shows that eloquently on the History Channel, grounded on 9-11. And you had that to your disposable to figure that out. That why that's what the mix-up is, and you didn't. You threw away a sixth plane. So now you're only yeah you're trying to capitalize on the fifth. Be and honest, it, right? And it goes to a point in favor of fringe conspiracy theories. Yes, I showed you Myers telling you they fought many phantoms that day what 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 planet am i living on i'm in the post-truth world i'm in the cartoon verse where a couple of multi-millionaires can sit there and wax philosophically about the other plane on 9-11 who by the way jason the phantoms were basically in the hopes of diverting the defense jets to jets that didn't exist not that the hijacked planes were phantoms. Ooh. Who? All right, come on. Let's get with it. About 20 minutes. We're going premium. Redvoicemedia.com slash Jason. Redvoicemedia.com slash uncensored. 10 bucks a month. $100. Let's share the you know, The news I, I want to talk about is important, but this is as important as it gets. Why is this as important as it gets? Because, again, we're still under this lie and this guise of terror, terror, terror. We're still in the Middle East. We're just expanding the police state and the draconian uh, institutions of enslavement here and abroad. Well, it's what happens when you do building I mean, worship. The patriot yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. You don't go look at the Germany and the Hamburg cell and everywhere else and what else we did afterwards at 9 11. I think this is a huge point you're raising because this is. You know, where the misconception about, oh, we got to prove what happened at Ground Zero mm -hmm. to know what institutions are involved in 9 11. No, you mm -hmm. don't. In fact, there's no suspects named with Ground Zero. You can allude mm -hmm. to Larry Silverstein or the Jewish conspiracy or that the US Army put, but you don't know it. I'll yeah. tell you what we do know it's through the public record. The CIA, the NSA, Israelis, Saudi operatives were monitoring who? The hijackers inside the United States and abroad that Nelson just brought up with Germany. Now, if you look into like the long history of intelligence, hey, guess what? Now we got names to go along with that. Something you don't got at Ground Zero. Stop looking at Ground Zero and nowhere else. 
it's fine. You want to prove that the World Trade Center came down by explosives, which I, you know, I, I happen to think maybe, but I'm not the right person for that because that's not my area of study. Go to so go to like Chandler or David Chandler or Wayne Costi. They know yeah. more than I do regarding that. My area of study is the intelligence services and geopolitics, something that Nelson also. And your expertise is 1993. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> something that, by the way, that's a whole nother argument. Yeah, but that's because, but that, but that focuses on the building. That focuses exactly. on the, the intent and everything. So that's right. where you're an expert on. <laughs> right. So, right. But I, I don't concern myself with expert anyway. But oh. anyway, regardless, <laughs> look into the intricacies involving intelligence that's always aligned with fundamentalist uh, uh, groups. This goes back even before Al Qaeda. Abu Nadal, anyone? So, and uh, do I need to mention this Jara family? This is this could go on five hours. Did stand up when you figure out they lied to you up and down about 9-11? Does Homeland Security stand up? I'm not saying we shouldn't have border control. I mean, I, we had it before Homeland Security. We didn't need Deutschland Security for that. Let's start growing up. Yes, Man, I agree with uh, everything you just said there. Let's, let's keep going here. Yeah. Tim Minter. We got a phone call from a law enforcement officer who was on vacation, was in the United Airlines terminal at the time. As soon as he approached, they walked out of the terminal and he looked over. He described them as Middle Eastern in both appearance and dress. Not sure what that means, but that was his description. He said when they left the terminal through the glass doors, he saw them meet a third man and they then left. All right, the dress he's talking about now because TMZ, thank you, TMZ. And Harry Lew uh, Harvey Lewin is talking about the burqa wearing individual. That's what he's referring to. That, that's my guess. Inside the bags, officials found Al Qaeda instruction sheets, but false identification prevented investigators from ever locating the bag's true owners. And that, that right there is from the eleven. What's and that? The only, and they were the first one to cover Flight 23, and the only mistake they made was saying that it was Newark Airport rather than JFK. Rather, right. would be found the exact same way. There have also been reports of uh, luggage that did not make the... Uh, now the it's left. See, that that's all That's all covers of Flight 23. One of the uh, alleged perpetrators, and this is being reported by the, the Boston Globe and uh, contained within the luggage, were supposed to be uh, Arabic language flight training manuals as well as uh, uh, videotapes pertaining to uh, operating an aircraft. Then we have that mysterious suitcase Mike Rivera. with all of the hijackers' names and all of this incriminating evidence that is supposedly taken by one of the hijackers to the airport why if they are planning on a suicide attack would they even bother to pack a suitcase and, and by the way so, no, I, I, hey. this is really easy to answer to make it look like they are not going there without any luggage which which raised suspicion by security officials hello yeah it was all disguised That's, yeah that is just obvious yeah mike didn't think that went out too well <laughs> right. If you, if I'm Ed, would that make any? Would that make sense? If I'm going on a coast to coast trip, I'm bringing luggage because I'm going on a long range trip. I'm staying somewhere at a hotel or whatever. And I'm staying. In those days, absolutely. Today, um, because of the cost of extra baggage, right? Um, right. Good point. I, 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 I went, I went, I went back home to visit family, and I actually wore my my baggage. I layered up in multiple clothes to save money on. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> carry on and stuff it was crazy right but yeah but those days absolutely you'd have baggage and luggage and right and this is it. not to raise awareness because they're arab right um and they're traveling in groups they want to make it look like hey we're on a business trip or something but if mm -hmm. you're going to san francisco or los angeles and you don't have luggage Red light's coming on right i mean that's just i think that's obvious when james yeah. woods talks about this and, and a lot of this information wasn't available, the James Wood stuff, because we didn't have the Dark Overlord documents. That's now five years old. That's 2018. That's a story that never got... Every, every, let's just act like it doesn't exist. Let's act like all these trials didn't happen. Let's act like there isn't still a ton of classified documents on 9-11. Let's, let's act like... Stuff right there. The yes, land. yes, sir. Yeah, I know and we have... Yeah, how 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 many years are gonna go by, Jason, before we talk about Operation Encore? 
Thank you. Yeah, for Thank the you. missile that hit the Pentagon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. You're, he's 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 right. All these things. So, how did everybody get into chemtrails and to, you know, uh, crisis actor here, crisis actor there? Uh, God forbid, every single other stupid conspiracy trend afterwards. You know, it's like, right? All these years have wasted to look at these documents to try to put teams together to do something and keep putting film content, storytelling. Because there's a lot of storytelling once you once you dig into it. There sure is. Now, just to follow up, Ed, one, your, let me pick it back on your your turn. I have read a lot of the operation. There's fifteen thousand. I, I initially stated it was five. I found that was fifteen thousand pages. I'm at seven thousand. I'm I, I'm barely halfway there, and I found some really illuminating things on those files. But it, it 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 answered a lot of questions in regards to speculation with Saudi Arabian operatives inside the United States. We assumed that they were involved. Well, now we know. It's now a fact. Did the media report this? For well, one week they did. In fact, the first media outlet that reported on this, because when I when I read it, I made the video at 4 30 in the morning. And because I said, Oh my God. I can't believe it. Northjersey.com. Ever heard of it? No, I didn't. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that that little uh, press release later became, three weeks later, a story for a week. It was covered by ABC. It was covered by CBS. CNN, I don't think, covered much of it. No, I don't think the other ones did. FBI yet. gave a press release. They have to when they release information. But they didn't, you know, they gave out a little bit. That's it. A little bit. And those really researchers on the journalistic end, well, they read it. You know, they read whatever is press released by the Department of Justice. And they did a story. But it died quick. Did the 9 Let me ask you, Nelson, Ed. Did the 9 11 Truth Mother report the latest operations on court files? No. no. Right. That's right. Nobody did. No, they're not even covering. Not they, even. They were, they're not making that even a big ordeal that you have Anwar al Awlaki looking right at Omar al Bayoumi right there having some weird festive gathering in some San Diego apartment. You know, my God. Not not only that, but they were they were made aware of these documents by us, and they still haven't done anything with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Now, so, let me give you one example, Jason. Right which was mind-blowing to me. There is a document by an informant to the FBI who was at the um, the um, the Saudi, uh, the, the Los Angeles Mosque, King Fab Mosque. Yeah. Run by Fahad Al-Tumari. Yeah. This informant said that he was privy to a phone call that originated out of Malaysia, where the Malaysia summit meeting happened, before the meeting even happened, and said that there were two brothers coming to the United States. They were Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midar. Who knew about this? Fahad al-Tamari and two of associates of the Saudi Foreign and Terrorist Minister, and his name was Muasset al-Jara, who was actually put in that position by the Bush administration. He comes in, and he basically is the coordinator of Fahad Al-Tamari, Omar al bayoumi Osam Bastan, and all the operatives that gave logistic and funding to Khalid Al-Bidar, Nawaf al and later Hani Anjur in Arizona. Okay? While this is going on, this is all documented by an informant, not one, but two. Yeah. And there's, a, and there's a Millennium Plot link, too, because Rassam has phone contacts that are linked to Al-Tamari. That's right. And so you'll see that this connection not leads back to previous terrorist attacks, but all the way back to maybe even Abu Nadal. And I'm not, I'm not going into all this because that takes so much time and stuff, but we'll, we'll mm -hmm. keep it recent. The 93 bomber, okay? That wasn't Al-Qaeda. These are freelance terrorists. But later on, Bin Laden grows his army under the full awareness of the intelligence agencies. Nothing's done to stop it. Even when Ooh. throughout the mid-90s, you bring this up and you basically say, yeah, you know, they had assassination plots. They sure did. Clinton knocked down every single one said, nope. 
not going to take this man seriously. He doesn't deserve, you know, our attention. Later on, he's building an army. Everyone's warning him. Hey, listen, this guy's building an army. And Bin Laden, here's the real conspiracy. Bin Laden is not secret with his threats. He's the opposite. He's telling you. He's attacking the United States. Everyone knows. So all this stuff that you bring up, Jason, well, Condoleezza Rice, oh, we didn't know they were going to use planes. They knew back in 95. Yeah. But you can plot. We know that. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So the conspiracy is, is not that the government's hiding the fact. They're making it known. Bin Laden is making it known. They are going to attack you using planes. Now, the conspiracy is this, Jason, is that the government is saying we didn't have the information. The intelligence operations are saying we we shared the information. But that wasn't true. The truth was the government only knew a little bit. But they knew something was coming, did nothing about plane security or INS security. Just let it go through. These guys came walking in with the full knowledge of the intelligence community and let the attacks happen. Yeah. And now you bring up into the subject, which is the most important. We're talking about the reaction to the 9-11 attacks, which is the ripple effect that we're speaking about today. The yeah. invasions of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya. Now we're talking. Because that involves who? The real governments who benefited from the 9-11 attacks. Israel, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf, and the United States. Now we're talking. Now let's, let's have that discussion. Because that talks about specifics. But cool. if you don't believe in hijackers, and you don't believe in hijacked planes, and you start propagating these theories, guess what happens? The public turns you off says you're all nut jobs when you're not, not all of you are. No one's going to take you seriously. And in in default, people like us suffer from those consequences because we are actually saying, yeah, there were conspiracies. There was something involving those governments, but there will ne- no one's going to listen to us because we're automatically seen as nuts that Alex Jones portrays. That's why I'm such a huge critic of Alex Jones. <laughs> I, he has done he has done Don't immeasurable irreversible damage that's why i hate him i hate alex jones for what he did it can, he can he is still doing it. even when it's come out he's a liar he's come out in court he does it for entertainment that's what the civil suit with his wife kelly jones, yeah right yeah he couldn't even pay for the, her glasses today i've seen the, i've seen the post from his ex-wife not even paying, you know, yeah, support yeah. for his kids. Yeah, that's the reason why we hate Alex Jones because he's the godfather of all these if, this information which hurt us, not you or anybody else. Well, you know what? He did hurt you. He did hurt you because I think I happen to think that you are a little bit tired of the repetitive non-response from the rational community in 11 and you're not getting anywhere with the truth of community. I know you're not. I know you're not. And I think you want more. That's why we're doing this video. Yeah, we've we've been treated like children yeah. and we've largely accepted it. Or if they're just packing the suitcase to look like they're checking luggage, just throw clothes in there. Why put a Koran? Why put flight manuals? Why put all this incriminating information if it's supposedly going to get burned up? And then magically, amazingly enough, this one suitcase doesn't make it onto the connecting flight to New York. And it's just there in baggage handling, waiting to be discovered and found. If the passengers... Mike, we we didn't need the information on the luggage. We had the information in Germany. We knew who they were. (laughs) There are a few people now, I would say, that cover this. Just us in this room. And maybe Ben and Eric, Sean Russell, Darren Harvey, uh, and, and past individuals like Paul Thompson and Fenton and Ray Nolowiski and John Duffy. But that's it. Robbie Martin, Abby Martin, them too. But that's it. That's not that I could, you know, that's the real crime. The hidden crime in 9-11 is that I can name maybe 10 reputable people that talk about this stuff. I can name you a hundred that don't, that actually talk about the real, you know, cracky, kooky stuff. Three, the, three of those 10 are in this room. Right. I, I, that's, hard. I, that's the real hidden crime of 9-11. And God's sakes, man, the CIA were on these guys in Germany. In Germany. 
trying to and the two guys that Nelson brings up in his films, uh, Marmoon Darkens Ali and Mohammed Haydar Zamar, look into those bad guys' backgrounds. Syrian run gunning connection with secular Arab fundamentalists. And by the way, who actually coordinates those groups and affiliates with those groups? Look into the Israeli. Uh, uh, what was that one group that masked themselves as Arabs? I always forget that. Oh, Mr. Arvim. Mr. Mr. Arvim. Arvim. Right. Yeah. Does uh, I never hear anything like that out there in the public sphere. But that's who uh, that's what Ali Al Jara, that's the cousin of, of Zia Jara, <clears throat> Hezbollah connection, secular Arab fundamentalist groups. Well, yep. he was working with the Mossad for 25 years. His his brother Joseph Al Jara was helping him for 10 of those years. And this guy, Zia Jara, is part of the 9 11 planes operation. Now we're talking, right? Now with you know, but nobody, but if you don't believe in hijackers, none of this information exists. And you don't look into it. Used false identification. Why wouldn't the other hijackers? Based on my personal belief and based on the events of that morning, um, the decision to halt airplanes in all likelihood probably precluded other attacks. Ada and three others would do dry runs of the attacks before 9-11. Actor James Woods and others on the plane even yeah. filed separate reports to the FAA. Again, nothing was done. I was on a flight. Uh, without going into the details of, of what made me suspicious of these four men, although it would have been blatantly obvious to the most casual observer, uh, I took it upon myself to go to the flight attendant and ask to speak to the pilot of the plane. The first officer came out. I reported to him that I felt that the four men, and I said, can you look over my shoulder and see who I'm talking about? And he said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I said, I think they're going to hijack this plane. I mean, everything they're doing, and I explained to him these details, which I've been asked to keep private until whatever <laughs> jurisdiction, you know, uh, whatever trials may take place. No trials took place. No. I didn't even need James Wood's story to know about this much. Nelson and Ed know what I'm talking about here. You had two Saudis back in 2000 that actually was on a plane to go to a dinner, a Saudi funded dinner by in Washington DC of all people. And it was, I think it was a, a Delta Airlines. Could mm -hmm. be wrong. I think it was Delta Airlines. Mm -hmm. Muhammad al Qathari, Qathari yeah, and another- Started person. from Arizona, yeah. That's right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And they went to the cockpit thinking it was the bathroom, not once, but twice during the flight. And the flight attendant told them that it was a cockpit the first time they still went in try to get into the cockpit, shaking the door and stuff, right? It was a dry run. The FBI even admits this. And that's well before James Woods' story. You think that they heightened security then? No, they didn't. And that By was the right way, coming to the peak of the millennium. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. You just saved me a conversation there. Now, one of those guys that was next to Quad Theory, Hamdan, uh, Hamdan, actually was borrowing a car from a person who's a, a training camp advisor in Afghanistan to Al Qaeda. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit too close to home for me, pal. Trials took place. What jurisdiction? Uh, no, we set up black sites like Abu Ghraib and Gitmo, and then and then a bunch of bobbleheads. Those aren't black sites, by the way. Black no, sites right. would be detention site green. Detention site blue. They're, they're like an old in Europe, actually. Yeah, they're not even in the United. They're in they're in Egypt. They're yeah. in Germany. You know Switzerland. Yeah. You know the countries that don't have Abu Ghraib like, was, was was just a result of the Iraq War. I Man, that's that's, the, that's a whole other. That's right. Really important scandal, but that's you know. Thought they were right. That's right. We're enlightened and fighting the deep state. Started defending Gitmo, and you basically blamed it on the boogeyman Bin Laden. And then his accomplice, He's not a who may or may not have been putting videos out last year, Al Zwarhi, right? Somebody who's been killed like several times. You know, I like, covered that. That was the guy. And then the big <laughs> mustachioed plumber looking dude. Plumber? That guy. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Oh. And that, that, those aren't real trials. <sighs> That's not reality. Right. And here yeah. we sit. Yeah, there's a reason why there's no trials, Jason, is because they were tortured. And anything they said on the torture cannot be used in court, even in a military tribunal. Now, I've interviewed Mark Fallon. I've interviewed Ken Jenkins, who wrote the Phoenix Memo. And they basically said that 
they yes, whatever, even in a military tribunal, whatever they said basically can't be used in court. Now, the re maybe there's a reason why the CIA did that is so that it that even if they were telling the truth, you really couldn't believe it. Even if Khalid Sheikh Mahmoud, you want to believe that Khalid Sheikh Mahmoud told the truth. I think he did plan 9-11. But do we know it? No, because he said it under torture. But what you don't know, and what Ed and myself and Nelson knows, is that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Ramzi bin al-Sheib, before they were captured, gave a, gave an interview with Yoshri Fruit of Al, al Jazeera. By the way, he has a channel on YouTube. He made a great series. We got two bands all in Arabic, but there's some that has English translate. Remarkable series. And they talked about who? Oh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi bin al-Sheib, meeting with Yoshri Fruit, telling him, yeah, we did this. Here's the conspiracy. Yeah. And it was only he's like, yeah, he said it was four planes, it was 19 right. hijackers. Yes. Right. All their brothers are in prison right now. He, yeah. They know they're there to the facilitate. We'll give into your narrative. Sure. Sure. Remember, college. Oh, that's, why been, I mean, that's why he beheaded Daniel Pearl. To make this like, ah, savage. You know, right, he's a savage, right? He's this a is what come, this is what happened to you. Yeah. They was they knew it was psychological it was propaganda. You know? That's right. That's right. But yeah, the, but there you have it. Now, that leads to the question, who are these guys on the fifth plane, right? Look into the backgrounds of these people. That's all I got to say. And again, I, Bill, I, I'm sure that your your paths have, have crossed with James Woods. He would be an interesting guest. Talk to him about not only these other flights. Oh, look at that. It looks like there were another hijacking. So 9-11, something else going on in 9-11. But what was happening in preparation of 9-11? Uh, their behavior was such that, uh, that that I felt they were going to hijack the plane. I found out later that not only was did he make a report, but the flight attendant also made a report of my suspicions to the FAA. And my friend Scott said to me, you know, remember that flight you took in August? I said, yeah, I've been thinking about it all day. He said, well, maybe you should call the FBI. And I said, I'm sure they're being inundated, but I thought it over and I called the local office. Quarter to seven the next morning, I got a phone call that actually wakes me up. And he said, uh, we want to talk to you about the flight that you took in August. I said, oh, did the, did the manifest match of any of the flights yesterday? And my, my flight, he said, "Well, we can't tell you that." I said, "Well, look, I'll get ready, and I'll, you know, I'll come down to the uh, to the federal building." He said, "We're outside your house. We'll just wait." Wow, for you. seven fifteen. <laughs> so I, this quarter seven in the morning. I said, uh, "And I, and this is the only funny part of any of this." I said, "How did you know where I lived?" And there was a pause. He said, uh, "We're the we FBI. Know. We're right. the FBI. Thank you." Yeah, we're the <laughs> FBI. Uh, we we. I mean, there were certain people that we not only knew who some of these hijackers were, they were working for us. <laughs> ah, like Ebot Salem. Ah, ah, yes, like Ebot Salem and, and, and his uncle KSM. Oh, that's right. It's Ramsey Yusuf. Oh, <laughs> no, Jason, Jason, Jason. That is a huge charge on your part. Yeah. Right? If you have evidence to show that any of the 9 11 hijackers will work at the FBI, I am begging you to contact me and give me that information. I want to know it. Because I will tell you what, I'll go further. I'll even I'll even make a video saying I need a lawyer that will that will take this information and join me in a court of law and basically you know, we could actually maybe conduct an investigation and an internal investigation. The FBI work with the 9-11 hijackers. That's a big charge, Jason. And you you know what? You could get away with it on your platform. That's unfortunate because I couldn't do that because I would lose my audience because I built up the audience to, to respectability. I care about being right. Um, but this doesn't help. And that's a big, huge. Imagine saying that. Oh, sense. <laughs> so they came in, and I said, "Look, I, I'm dying to know were these the guys." And he said, "Well, we've had thirty-six thousand tips in one day, and there's two of us, and we're going to be at your house all this morning, so you can do the math, but we can't tell you, you know." So mm -hmm. since then, I have identified for sure uh, two of them as two of the terrorists, really? uh, who actually were not on flight 11, but one was on flight 175 and one was on flight 77. See, he talks about that. And you notice he talks about flight 11 because that's the flight that he was on in August, just before the attacks. Okay. 
And I've been told unofficially, not by the FBI, but by someone else, a higher level of government, believe it or not, just through a coincidence, through a mutual friend, that all four of them were terrorists involved. As I explained to the FBI, they said, what was your first instinct? And aside from certain things like four guys getting on a transcontinental flight without any hand luggage. They said to me, you know, what, made, what did you think these guys were? I said, well, I thought they were the four law enforcement officers or four terrorists in that they had that thing right. that guys who are undercover or on a mission have between each other. So let me just stop it there. Again, pretty important stuff. Seymour Hirsch also confirmed for him that that's a real story. He said that in court. I have a whole video called The Secret Testimony of James Woods that goes over the documentation that came out in 2018. So, so again, we, I, I mean, uh, imagine, Bill, somebody was all over this 20 years ago. That's more evidence that the hijackers had intelligence ties. So right here, um, you know, you know I, I feel like we got 10 minutes. The other targets here, this is the Paris Glendon clip. I think that we should we should put this out there because this shows you not only were there other planes, there were other targets that day. Other swaps. There were almost certainly other targets. Maryland's governor on the morning of 9-11 stated that his police department had received threats prior to the attack, not only against the targets that had been hit, but others that came in today you, you mentioned threats on, on uh, maryland facilities are these threats that came in today yes yeah, David. Uh, the uh, head of our state police dave mitchell uh received a uh, list of uh, 11 uh, uh sites across the country uh that were uh, targets uh supposedly this yeah. bojinka targets prior to the explosions <laughs> uh, several of those sites yeah somebody probably went to the uh dual filing cabinet pulled out the bojinka files and see. Went, oh yeah yeah here are the targets here they are these yeah this, put this out uh, put this out on the wire and you know let people know that these are potential targets based on this intelligence we gathered back in back in the day now if you want to play speculation on top of that i'll let me speculate could it be that these specific targets also involve members of the art student ring in Israel? We'll have to match that up. Uh, under attack. Another target on that morning was Air Force One. Although it is never discussed, the perpetrators of the attack somehow got top secret codes that morning. And Brian, what is the credible no, evidence? Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold. <laughs> what the, what's that mean? I don't even know what that means. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna share an article just really quick. I don't want to like bore you to death, but there is an article. The Angel talks, article. It talks about it's a daily it's a Daily Mail article. Oh, um, you're gonna put the angel the angel is dead. Or what's it called? Yeah. So here you know exactly where I'm going. As we got over Gainesville, Florida, we got word from Jacksonville Center. They said Air Force One, you have traffic behind you and basically above you that is descending into you. We are not in contact with them. They shut off their responder. And at that time, it kind of led us to believe that maybe someone was coming into Sarasota. They saw us take off. They just stayed high. And we are following us at this point. We have no idea what the capabilities of the terrorists were at this point. They speculated it was a terrorist plane. Tillman said he flew the specifically adopted some Boeing 747 onto the Gulf of Mexico to see if the other plane would follow, right? When the other jet continued on its route, he was later told it was an airliner that had lost its transponder, which sends out an electronic identification signal, and the pilots had failed to switch to a new radio frequency. Tillman said the threat remained, and he received a message. We got word from the vice president and the staff that Angel was next, Angel being the classified call sign of Air Force One. Once we got into the Gulf and they passed to us that angel was next at that point i asked the fighter support if an airliner was part of the attack it would be good to have fighters on the wing to go ahead and take care of us but they knew who the pot that the plane was they had lost the transponder it wasn't a terrorist plane this information but but, but, out there. but it's out there yeah this is, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that it still wasn't it wasn't uh legit could have been legitimately targeted while it was in the air it could have been you know these people could have been Operatives out there with sting, you know, stinger missiles, anti-aircraft missiles, for what we know, you know, um, on the ground. Know. You know, on I mean, look, I mean, look, look, look at uh, look at TWA hundred. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. 
but yeah, nevertheless, but like, but he's not being specific. <clears throat> That's the no. problem. Yeah, and of, of course, we'll, 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 we'll cut him some slack because he doesn't know anything about the longboat observer story. Oh, okay. No, that's a good point. That's uh, a good point. These planes were some distance from Air Force One after all. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the excuse was that, quote, we do not discuss, you know, we do not discuss intelligence information. Uh, Air Force One has been said to be a target in the past uh, during President Clinton's trip uh, to Bosnia. Uh, during his first term, where they stopped in Oslo and switched out into three transport planes. Similarly, they were escorted by fighter jets, as they have in the past, while it is not routine. Uh, the White House uh, insisting that the uh, evidence was, and thus the zigzag flight path from Florida to Louisiana, the Air Force is insisting that the evidence is provable and credible that the aircraft and the White House were targets. Ari Fleischer, the White House press secretary, would be pressed on this issue. If, if you have a threat to Air Force One, it seems as though you're raising an, an additional threat that perhaps we don't know about. I'm sorry? Raising an additional threat? It's involving one of those it's planes. Yeah, you'll get it, Campbell. Sorry, is, is that where the credible threat, or can you say, are we talking about no, something you, totally different? You're asking me, in essence, what the source of information is. And I think the American people. No, 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 no. Go ahead. We accounted for those four planes and what their targets were. Is there, which by deduction, you would assume there is something else that we're talking about targeting Air Force One. There was. that assumption? Uh, I'm not going to lead you any further as to speculating about what was the nature of the threat to Air Force One. They had the secret codes that day. What, what else do I need to say? So. You know, this is a, a, a Daily Mail company. Six unsolved mysteries of 9-11's fifth plane, United 23. Burka cloud man in first class. Arabs demanding the jet take off before it was grounded. And box cutters found in a nearby aircraft, which were mm. on the wrong plane. The wrong plane. Mm -hmm. could, it, could it be that it wasn't a wrong plane? It was going to be a potential hijacking of that plane? It was the right plane at the wrong time. Right, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, again, guys, they lied to you about 9-11. Yeah. So, uh, he made, so he's saying that these are fake targets, fake to make it look. But Okay, but why Why fake it all up for the omission report to, to filter it out? I think that's a really good point. Yeah. That's why, why, we, why even have the uh, weapons yeah. on the plane? Yeah. Why even why even care about about the, the visas? You know, you, you know, well, that's how Saudi Arabia is involved. Well, no, you're not. You're absolving them. If you're just saying they're out there to move around and then not even do the hijacking. Right. They're right. not involved. Right. You don't have anything there. You you don't even need to do that. You know, why do they give a backstory? Just give good evidence that they're at, they're at the airport and they don't even offer that. You know, not enough chain of evidence, but you know what I'm saying? Right. It reminds me of that that. um the Saudi passport that the truth is say, oh, they found this passport in Madden. Well, if they wanted to blame Iraq for the attacks on 9-11, why don't they just make that passport of Saddam al-Saskami, an Iraqi passport? I mean, Ramzi Youssef was doing it for everyone, for them. Yep, right. That's <laughs> another good point. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a really good point. Right. Because they, they wanted to show the connection to Iraq and terrorism. And yeah. who's behind that? Well, Israel and the uh, neocons in the Bush White House. Yeah, I mean, Amy also already sal saluted our troops when we went to Iraq. Is this good? <laughs> keep, keep it up. I'll take out their dictator. For the yeah. We're the baddies. We're the baddies. Yeah, the boy idiot had nothing to do with it. We needed a real investigation. We never got one. The people that helped pull this off and propagate the lies surrounding it, they're still in charge. Okay? And now we're at a point where somebody who doesn't I love him or hate him, when, when Donnie T was recently asked about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11, and there is, again, that, that consulate funding, that's real. There's many layers to this. Trump said, we still don't know who did 9-11, and it's a shame we should by now. So... Trump's supposedly going to be uh, indicted today. It's uh, almost 9 a.m. on the East Coast. In fact, maybe we should check. Let's do it live. It'll, it'll be the top story of the Daily Mail. If you I think it's pretty much done with now, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, you're pretty I much think you're right. right. That's right. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. See, that's so, my whole thing. It's like, yeah, you can't even solve 9 11, you can't even get anything straight, but somehow he's an expert on everything else now to be, a, you know, a social critic. <laughs> I, well, I stay away from that anyway, but yeah, well, yeah, the point the point made here is that even with the Trump, and this is brought up by Nelson the other day, uh, and repeatedly, is that even with the Trump administration supposedly on your side because he actually questions the 9 11 attacks, did the 9 11 truth moment do just that? Nope. Silence. Silence. And now with the new revelations coming out, which has been more than at any point except for 2001, 2002, we've had more released information regarding the TMZ article and Operation Encore Files. Truth Movement covered that? And that's the problem. Even if they and came they, out, And they won't. Yeah, why is that, Ed? Because it's too much. Then they have to acknowledge that everything they've been pushing all these years has been, has been problematic. And they have to start it back to ground to, to ground zero <laughs> without going without going back to ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> without going back to ground zero, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, this is this is a problem that's facing us to the current day, and that uh, you know I wish we could have had. The movement of 2005 six today we could have reached a lot more people um i but, tried yeah you guys did we could have we could have uh we could have done something not let, let the uh you know the war on terror escalate to further what it is now you know yeah that's a that's a good point by the way mm -hmm. but yeah i'm hoping jason that you you know i'll let nelson ed you know opine that thoughts after mine is that um i hope you don't see us as detractors or enemies because I don't see you that way. I think that I have I have hope in you that um, that I think you're you're tired of the repetitious arguments put forth by the 9/11 fringe community movement, and that you want something more. This video proves it. I think for me, the video that you made, and I I'm I'm gonna watch your your response video too when you see the film, and um, if you ever want to reach out to me. I'm open. I don't have you blocked on Twitter or anywhere else. Um, you can reach out to me. I'd like to hear from you. And um, I think that there's a conversation to be had. But there are some modifications along the way that you need to do. And one of them is Alex Jones. He's uh, a cancer to anything he touches. No matter what he's done for you in the past, I think he's actually your 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 worst enemy. You may not see it now. But he is. We are not your enemy, and we never were. And so I'll let you guys finish the, at the end. Uh, you know, I don't know. I've got. I think I've said said what I needed to say because, you know, we covered everything we needed to. You know, anybody for anybody else, uh, just watching this, you know, uh, all I can say is, you know, watch the TMZ special, share it, you know, um. And if you want to, uh, you know, watch my film, Bojinka Maximum, if you want to share that too, even though it's a, a bit overwhelming, but, um, you know, that, you know, that's it. That's it. It's like, all we can do is this video and, you know, put it out public. If he wants to watch it, he can watch it. You know, maybe some of his, you know, his friends, his closer people will watch it. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll have, you know, maybe they'll get him to watch it, or maybe they'll be able to exchange some of this information to him. And challenge him. Would so. you be willing to talk with Jason if he wanted to? Sure. Ed? Yeah. I've actually met Jason a few times. I have nothing against him. Great guy. Um and uh I, and he knows I just I, I yeah, and I just I just I just want I I want him to grow. I want him to actually uh right. I know he's I know he's looking, it looks like it, and he and he's not somebody to be confined to particular clicks if you know what i mean yeah so he is he is a bit uh more independent uh more of an independent thinker so i think he's uh i think he's definitely in a position where he can uh he can he be, he'd be more willing to accept new information uh that is that is going to be more difficult to digest but i think he's he's definitely up for the task i agree and um nelson i'm going to share your bajika macam film in the description and everybody can watch the film in uh, chapters or, or watch the whole film at once. Uh, but nevertheless, 
that'll be the end of the video. I, I thank you, Ed Nelson, for joining in and give me your thoughts on the subject. And um, hopefully, Jason Burmes, you can reach out to any one of us and um, hopefully we'll have that conversation in the future. As for the rest of you, have a good afternoon. Thank you for chiming in.